<laughs> it's, the, it's the long lost Saurian. <laughs> oh my gosh, brother. The, 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 foxy, the foxy jump scare. <laughs> He got that booty. Oh, the booty. That's right. That's right. Sell it. Good selling point. Nice. Very worth it. <laughs> Caked. We get super sidetracked that we don't talk about Quan Chi until two hours into the episode. So now I'm gonna cut to the Quan Chi part first. So. What do you guys think about the Mortal Kombat One Quan Chi trailer? Well, I'll just I'll just re repeat what I said on Twitter. Oh no, they changed his preferred hentai tag from mind control to tentacles. You, I, I saw one of your responses of someone someone asking, "What did you think about the Quan Chi trailer?" And your response was, "Eh," and I was like, oh, "He he thought Quan Chi was <laughs> above above a bad." <gasps> <laughs> okay, that, the, but it's your Quan favorite Chi character, Snake. <laughs> the yeah, Quan Chi thing is, is, is really overblown. I don't mind it, but it is one of those where it's like, I've, I've barely even talked about Quan Chi in like four years, guys. I do think the, the Quan Chi in this trailer, they definitely were like, okay, Quan Chi, probably a little bit boring for some people. We're going to just throw in all these weird ass sh for him to make maybe spice yeah. him up i think it kind of works just randomly like mm -hmm. okay cool tentacles cool cthulhu monsters portal See, how, here. how much cooler would this character have been if he actually did his tentacle shit in the main story that's a really good point like well, i'm, I'm, I'm stuff... sure he'll i'm sure he'll do it in um in the expansion like he'll, he'll just show up and suddenly be like i'm doing tentacle shit now and, sh and no one will bring up the fact that like where did this come from like, are you okay yeah <laughs> he'll, he'll just do it because <laughs> all he did in uh in the story mode was throw some green skulls and and talk menacingly and then when you play him when you play against him he's very underwhelming but this trailer kind of makes him feel like oh look at all this cool shit i can do maybe he learned all this shit, like after the story mode yeah mm -hmm. Maybe his ending will reveal what happened. Ah. Because that, that's the thing. Like, unlike Omni-Man, Quan Chi's ending will be presumably canonical. Presumably, so, yes. I, I, I've not even got Omni-Man's ending yet. I don't care. But with, like, with Quan Chi, I'm, I'm getting that shit day one. Because yeah. I need to know what, what, yeah. what his story is. Day one ending, and then I'm going <laughs> to watch all the intro dialogues and stuff. By the way, another apology. I, liked, oh, did I, I don't know if this is a mistake I made or not, but the last time we recorded... We had the worry that perhaps future DLC characters will be like Omni Man, and you won't be able to unlock mastery to level 35, and you won't be able to get like two skins, like mm. Mm. because Omni Man didn't have that. Well, I'm safe to say that I'm pretty certain that the Mortal Kombat DLC characters are not going to have that issue, and they will have level 35 till, but at least they will have another skin. And the reason for that yeah. is because Quan Chi and Ermac already have different skins in the story mode. Ermac uh, does? Um, Evo Ermac, remember? No, I don't know. From the alternate oh, okay. universe, he has a different design. He's wearing something different. Okay. I'll, I'll show up the footage. But yeah, like, good guy Quan Chi and bad guy Quan Chi are in the story I do mode. remember when they were throwing rocks. Yeah. So, like, that. they yeah. will have a, like, another skin. It's not just going to be that one. Hey, hey, uh, MK Onslaught team, you know what would make for a really cool uh, Chronicle event that people would love to see? MK11 Ermac in Onslaught. Oh, <laughs> We could finally yeah. play as him, but it'd be, it'd be in a mobile game, like an RPG, but we'd be able to play as MK11 Ermac, the, the design people cool. love. And it's not... I'm and, just and, saying... And, and good guy and bad guy Ermac don't even look like that in the in the game. It's just it's so bullshit. I have two two main... Uh, what's the word for this? I have two main takeaways from the Quan Chi trailer. Okay. Number one, I feel vindicated because I told people in advance, like, even if you don't like Quan Chi, like, I personally don't like him, he always has a really sick gameplay. So I predict he's going to have some really cool stuff gameplay-wise. But also, I was a bit upset because the tentacle monster would have been a better reveal if you didn't clearly see a weird tentacle in the <laughs> thumbnail, like next to Quan Chi, you can kind of see it. <laughs> and so I was like, what? what is that? Can he like summon tentacles? So it kind of barely gave away the surprise. Like if I had no clue that the tentacle thing was coming, that would have been incredible. Just like, oh my god! Instead of being like, what? what is this? <laughs> I, I'm surprised. What is this thing? Shoutouts to me recording that reaction when I was in LA for the Tekken 8 gameplay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were in your hotel and you recorded that. Oh, it's so hard yeah. to get a good shot, but here you go. Okay. This is uh, Ermac in chapter 13 <laughs> of the story mode. 
It is a different costume. Huh. Slightly, yeah. Uh... Yeah, it's it's like an armored, you know, because like when he wears the, it'll be better when you when you go in the gameplay. But he has a Give different. Give him a like, fucking yeah. mask, guys. The hoodie's the same as the funny part. Yeah, yeah. So 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 you see that you think is is that even just that's just the same? And it's like no, it's it is. It is a different costume. Look. Yeah, it's like. But okay, my my point is at least for the MK characters, they will have more skins than just. Than like unlike Omni Man. Well, well, well you would you would hope so. We, we don't have a guarantee of that. I love we that Quan Chi has like a utility belt. Because what's that even for? What could Quan Chi? I'm sorry, um, Ermac. Ermac has Ermac. a utility belt. Like, <laughs> what could he possibly need to store? Because he can manifest whatever he needs. You would think, like with his mind powers. So he's got a lot of but pockets. What, what does he yeah. need? There are a lot of things you can put stuff pockets. in. Well, yeah. it, well it's to carry the money sand. He keeps it's, money. He has sand in. He can just tele <laughs> telekinetic throat people. Pocket sand. <laughs> yeah, so Ermac and Quan Chi yeah. are guaranteed because in the story mode they have those skins. I really hope yeah. Takeda will too. I, I, I refuse to wear that costume that he wears right now. Just give me classic MKX Man. Takeda or cooler. Like That, that, that costume well, looks so well, that, that's, that's That's the interesting thing is... Because so the version we see in that trailer is based on the one in the story, which is like yes. the evil, evil alternate Kitakeda. timeline version. So the question is, if he has that, wouldn't that indicate that he is an evil alternate version of of him, or would it be that his they have that as an alternate and have a new design for the primary? Hmm. I yeah. um don't know. All I know is I've heard a little bit of spoiler talk from the Triple K Triple KO, the other awesome fighting game podcast, where they kind of mentioned saying like because of some leaks they kind of talk about that Takeda's existence is kind of like a wild card it's like we don't know what's mm -hmm. up with him he don't he's he's a little bit like a bit of a bit of a a dog let loose kind of a situation be careful Liu Kang or kind of a, kind of what in the intro dialogues and stuff so not too sure what they're going to do with him there but point is he's a bit of a chaos kind of character gotcha. the, now that I you know. mentioned uh Takeda Ermax outfit kind of looks like a recolored Takeda like the chess piece it kind of does I could be wrong, but I, it it looks like it could just be Takeda's outfit, and they changed the colors. Wait, it's, you mean like the, the it's full Takeda the armor. costume, or I think it's the just new one. a, a samey aesthetic, if, uh, if anything. Yeah, because it even has the neon lights going up the middle, which is what Takeda's new outfit has. But I could but, be wrong. Well, that's just there because green. So <laughs> that, that's because why. green. Uh, but one thing I'm I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm, I'm sure we're not even going to get that. Is I think everyone would want Quan Chi to have. Some skins that give him his white skin, and some that give him his like human skin before it goes white. <sighs> There's so I, many. I, gar yeah. I guarantee we're not going to get that. It's going to be just the white skin. In the same yeah. way that Melina, yeah. the same way that Melina and Ermac are in their classic form all together for the intros and stuff. I reckon Quan Chi's not even going to get a playable version with the brown skin, which fucking sucks. Like imagine. Like, imagine that, that poor man, he has to buy the game himself, he has to buy the DLC himself, and he can't even play as himself with his own skin color. It's bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, like you can't play Kenshi without um, without him being blind. I mean, without like yeah. the, the covering up, you can you have to always play him blind. Yeah. I wonder if when we play as Evil Kenshi, he's gonna have the sunglasses for sure. Um, who else? I remember there's a couple other ones, but yeah, it's just, you just can't play th like that mode, or, like maskless characters for Katana and Melina and stuff yeah. like that. But Melina, I get because she takes the mask off in her animations. Well, you you can it. with Katana depending on the skin, but that's not an on-off toggle. Yeah. Uh, Kenshi should definitely have a, a regular face option for one of his skins. Can we play as Tuxedo Kenshi yet? Yeah, we. Yeah, he's already in the shrine. Yeah, yeah. You can already get him. I thought it was Evil Kenshi we could play as for no, some. No, it's no. Tuxedo Kenshi, but he does still have like the bad dad, like the yeah. It, it's cover. they're very similar outfits, and it's, it's stupid that they were just like let's just put Evil Kenshi in a suit. It's not the same suit. It's a different suit. Why? I still. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm a different just suit. Misremembering. I feel like the suit he wears in story mode is still different. Than what you wear in the, in the game, like, but it could be 100. Imagine wrong. if they no, do something insane. cool. It, isn't it? Imagine if instead of evil Ermac and evil Kenshi, it was like evil Kenshi is is Ermac, like he's fused with the souls of his ancestors. Oh. So he is both in one. That'd be cool. That's too much. That's too much effort, Snake. How, how could you even? That would have been kind of cool for like MK1 <laughs> new era. I didn't like that idea that. though. Yeah. Um. So Chameleon, I guess, is next then because we already did talked we just, about Quan Chi. Are we done with Quan Chi like that? <laughs> we did. Okay, I'll, I'll talk a bit more <laughs> about Quan Chi <laughs> game. I, I, so. I've been, I've been, done with Quan, Quan I've, I've been done with Quan Chi since 2011. Okay. There's a couple of really cool things that Quan Chi does that I had to rewatch to see what was happening. So, when I saw the portal nonsense, when he like knocks you into a yeah, portal, yeah, I thought he was cool. like Noob Saibot. I could throw portals around. 
but then I rewatched it, and the portal only happens when he hits you with like a projectile that causes the portal animation. So mm. I don't think he can throw unblockables like like Noob Cybot could in MK9, which is a bit of a bummer. I was hoping they'd bring back that cool little gimmicky nonsense. Yeah, yeah. The second really cool thing he does is he opens the portal behind him and it powers him up. It makes his projectiles different. Yeah, yeah. He can throw out like five projectiles and he can throw out the really big one that eats every projectile in its path, which was awesome and also led to a portal when it hit. Um, and then the coolest, most interesting move he had that has never been in a Mortal Kombat game before is he summons that little cage yeah, that you're just stuck you in, in for like three seconds while he does something. Yeah. You're not comboed in it. You're just stuck. Like you can't move. It's similar to what they had in um, NBC Infinite. Marvel Infinite with the um, yeah the blue Infinity stone. stone. They put you in the cage. Space yeah, stone. it's just I like that. I was just thinking about that one. But you can jump in that. But yeah, maybe I don't know if you can jump in this yeah. one. Yeah, and it's also way longer in that game. And here it's just like it's two seconds, but it's still enough time to get a guaranteed portal behind you, which is cool. Somebody also pointed out it could be intentional. It probably is actually, because at first I was like, why is the portal this weird semi shield kind of shape? The portal the monster comes through is intentionally shaped like the Deadly Alliance um, logo. I did see some people mention that. So yeah, it, could, it could look yeah. like the Deadly Alliance so logo. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> I also think if that's supposed to be the Nether Realm, it's interesting how it went from being like literally hell to like green. space world. Oh, instead, yeah. Like picture. purpley green world. Yeah, it's like. It's a, it's, it's truly its own dimension now instead of just being well, hell, last which thing is, is like, interesting. Could, if you remember, if you go back to Shang Tsung's end in MK11, we see all these other titans, and yeah. like, there was like one of them oh. was like a bit of big tentacle monster, and I'm sure it was in purple That's space. Right. So it's probably connected to the titans. Like he's, he's getting the titan powers somehow. That would be very interesting Ooh. if that is the case. Um, I would like that. I am. I, I want to see another room now. Honestly, how 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 it is in mk1 like how it is in this universe right mm -hmm. now it's like what is it like because we don't have a another realm stage we only see it being mentioned for once for once for once <laughs> yeah <laughs> also oh uh the fatality sucked that's the only <laughs> fatality i've seen where i'm like this is dog water and i can't believe it got past the uh brainstorming phase like when they're destroying I, doodles I, I i like i like brutal. this not, not i like this not super long um the one thing i, I think would be cool because there was a that thing that he does, it, I've seen it in other media, and there's a film where it was done to a cow, and then like the pieces are like separated out, but the cow yeah. is still alive. So like, the the beating heart of the cow is inside one of the, the bits, mm -hmm. and I think that would have been a cool little thing to include, just a small little bit, and not just Quan Chi does that. It, it is a weird thing for Quan Chi of all people to do because it's yes, like, that was all the it's, it's not cl it's not classic Quan Chi, it's not tentacle hentai new stuff Quan Chi. I mean, he has to use his tentacles for his other fatality, surely. No, probably. So it's like, like, what, where's the gimmicks? Like, where's the leg ripping? Where's the mind yeah. control stuff? Where's the skulls? Everyone's like, favorite leg ripping. Portals. Like, what? what this isn't really a Quan Chi thing. It, like, mm -hmm. yeah, like that's the thing though. It's like, literally, that fatality can give, be given to like many other characters too. Like, like yeah. technically speaking, it's just, oh yeah, sorcerer Quan Chi, give it to him. Like, oh, which is inherently hey? bad. It's just. It's just, you, you kind of hope something a bit more personalized to the character's abilities. Yeah. Summons fucking glass. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, like that, could a, been a neat, that could have been a neat thing for someone like Geras or Tremor with the sand. Like, if it was yeah. like mystical glass. glass or something, but it's not. It's just regular glass. You know what I mean? It's like, like yeah. it, it could have been like dimension warping glass or something, like, like you're saying, Snake, where they're still alive when they're pulled apart. That could have been cool. And they're screaming like, ah, oh, the then he is, puts them back together and then like that, shatters that them or something. That could be for a really cool thing. Imagine if it was like Quan Chi during the events of um, the, the final chapter, like he manages to get access to the hourglass, like Shang Tsung's hourglass and gets glass mm. from it. You're really yeah. thinking. <laughs> I'm sure it's oh, yeah, not the that would have been a cool Garrus fatality I just thought of where like he, um, when he hits you with something, like it, it, breaks you into bits of glass and like you look around and it's like all your different realities and like your different timelines and he just like snaps his fingers and they all explode or something and it's like <laughs> it implies he kills you in every reality and it's like oh shit that's <laughs> nuts that's no, it's better be hard to do see, on a technical level little, little, <laughs> little videos of Garrus in like other timelines doing different fatalities on, on your counterparts <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, Garrus that, has two great fatalities though. I, I still think, think one is bad. that second fatality is um, my kind of favorite really really good we're definitely going to get a hentai monster fatality. Like, it's going yeah. to happen, where he, like, summons a monster and it does something horrible to you. 
I kind of hope they find some way to work in the really goofy Deadly Alliance fatality, but just make it, like, actually creepy and scary this time. Like, the monster grabs their neck and just starts pulling on it, like, oh, oh you mean the just long starts, like, neck stretching one? their neck and then finally yeah. pops it off or something. Yeah, That yeah. could be cool. Or, 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 so, or that happens to all the limbs, and they get all, like, long and gangly, but not in the same... Uh, length, so like one leg is way longer than the other, and they just uh, and like they, they, and like the, like the legs like noodly and it's like it's not straight, so they can't stand on it. Ooh, it's, it's, it's like some weird like Cenobite shit. Oh, that could be fun. Yeah. yeah, I mean they already made him. You mentioned Cenobite. They already made him look like Pinhead. Like that can't be <laughs> unintentional at the end of the story mode. Like he kind of is wearing a Pinhead looking esque outfit with the giant high collar yeah. that attaches to his head and like the big yeah. I mean, he looks pinhead. Let's let's not pretend he doesn't. Big old eyes. So, mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's oh. missing the pins, obviously. But <laughs> yep, it's not in the trailer, but we did bring it up a little early on. Uh, the new stage, like there's in the screenshots of Quan Chi, you do see like a new like Colosseum stage being shown. I didn't even notice. I'm so dumb. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I'll, I'll find a picture of it. But like, uh, but yeah, it, the, it, it, it is it a leak? Just... No, it's just a screenshot. It, it probably it does relate to the story, like probably like a a, a a chaos realm thing. Yeah. Oh, cool! I'm excited for chaos realm. It's like it looks yeah, like a chaos realm, like uh. Like we, we have we have literally never had a chaos realm stage. That's true. Yeah, there's the, 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 the we never had a vampire one either. There's the deception, <laughs> Sorry. Con deception conquest um thing. We had that. But we've never had like uh, an actual stage in Chaos Realm or Order Realm, and Vaternus we've never also, even been there. The first time we yep. ever saw Vaternus was Natara's ending in this game. Oh, I know Vaternus, we never got. I know, and it, it was the most lazy thing. What I, you expect? I never imagined something so lazy. It's just Gothic churches, and that's <laughs> it. <laughs> that's all we got for Vaternus. It's just like oh, churches. Yep. Like Castlevania Church. That that's it. Come on, people! Vampire World. Come on. Here is this does the look cool, new stage. I like it. Like uh, at least like in the screenshot like here with Quan Chi. Where's this from? Uh, it's like his move set or something like that. That you can find it. Let me see. Oh, okay. Uh, Cause very it, cool. Because it looked a bit like the um, the like smelting room with like mm -hmm. the the arches and such, but. Oh, look at the it, people. It looks like, yeah. it looks like that it's a yeah, that's the what pyramid. I mean. Well, those oh. aren't real people, though. Those are, those are statues. They're just, like, painted on the wall or something. They're not... Really? I don't think they're actually people. I think they're real people. I, I think they are statues, because they're all just one color. Hmm. Yeah. But, but, it's but like a the, mural. The, the colors, um, like the, the yellowy green... Something. The yellowy green is very Chaos Realm. So it's yeah. very likely, yeah, it's, it's very likely it is a Chaos, Chaos Realm, Realm stage. Which would be awesome. See, I probably thought this was just the um, the final stage because the top of the pyramid has these exact same colors, yeah, it, orange it, mixed with green and the big green thing in the center. So I just thought it was that probably whatnot. when I saw it. But yeah, because yeah, the yeah, giant chains too. I, I can't blame someone for not noticing the fact that this is a different stage. But well, no, it's it, not in the trailer. That's why you wouldn't notice it. You, it's like on their site. Yeah. That's why people are like bringing it up. <laughs> he has uh, the face skull, which is cool because I'm pretty sure it's actually a... Um, well, he does have that in MKX, doesn't he? Because originally the face skull projectile was um, a Shao Kahn thing. Yes. But I guess Quan uh, Chi eventually got it. I couldn't and... think of who it was, but yeah, that, that used to be his thing. And but then, then he just started like throwing his hammer and, and having spears, and then he just stops having so, like, stuff like that. This is not what it's going to be, guys, but imagine if it was. I see the chains attached to stuff, and it's most likely just like holding the top. It's probably a floating world, so like the they're keeping the top from floating away by chaining it down. Uh -huh. But imagine if those chains lead to Onaga. And he's being imprisoned they're, in this like other realm. They're not gonna and, do like, anything. Like Onaga's cool chained Onaga. up somewhere in the background. <laughs> I, that's my that's my that's my like that's my bet basically. It's like if they were gonna do like, something interesting. No! <laughs> if they were gonna he's do like, something interesting, with Onaga. Onaga, like no. <laughs> he he wouldn't have shown up in like the Reiko like ending already. It's just I feel like yeah. I feel like if they had plans, they would have kept them way more secretive. And like he's gonna be in the plot. Onaga is just gonna be <laughs> yeah. a f an ability, like a force of nature that like is just gonna be like whatever he. <laughs> oh no, he's gonna be the new hourglass for Story Mode Part Two. It's whoever gets to Onaga first can like consume his soul well, that's a and very get his power because cool. he's Holy tied up. Crap, that's so much gadgets on that gun. It's like a Nerf gun. It's, it's not just gadgets on the gun. It's just two extra guns. Oh, okay. Yeah, guns on looking, guns you're, on you're, guns. You're pointing it like vertically. You know, we can't we can't see them. <laughs> now now I'm seeing it. 
Look at that. Yeah, that makes more sense. It, it, it's, I, I wanted to make the most hideous abomination. I have a friend who, like, I was disgusted by this, and I was like, yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it doesn't make any sense. It, it's, got, like, it's got, like, three different, la uh, two laser sights, a flashlight, a UV light, uh, a Desert Eagle, uh, a 1911, a Glock. <laughs> Goodness gracious. That is horrible. Hideous. That's the most American thing I ever seen in my life. <laughs> That's the most Texas thing I ever done seen. And you it's in England. <laughs> it's a lot to blow That's the kind of crap like... that like Oompaville would build in his backyard. That's right. Oompaville has all the guns. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good little Texas boy. Blow yourself, blow yourself apart with this fucking deagle in the back. I don't. I don't like guns. I, I like. I like what guns can do. I could just never own one. I don't uh, want one. <laughs> well, it's it's illegal scary. over here. We we just don't. Yeah, nobody has it. Yeah. Here. Um, I feel like. For one thing, your suicide rate goes way up when you own a gun. But yeah. also, um, I can only imagine getting so mad one night that you're just like, this person has to die. And you're just like, you know. <laughs> so, like, don't give me a gun. It's a terrifying concept. I fired them before all the time, though, like in Texas, because my family owns them. And it's yeah. odd how easy it is to sell a gun versus, like, selling something else, like a oh, car. Shit, I forgot There's, There's more red tape sniper to sniper selling a car than selling a gun. On this thing. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny how... Why? <laughs> Different ranges. You got, you got like this one for like, medium range. This one's for uh, long range. Uh, uh, but I, f I find it interesting that, that we found this gun, more, this abomination, more interesting than Quan Chi's gameplay. So you know. <laughs> no, I think Quan Chi's gameplay is really interesting. I, I like actually Quan think like they definitely spice them up to be like that's Quan Chi's probably too boring for people. That's just tentacle, portals, cage. So I'm excited to see what they're gonna do. He he seems interesting. He seems like we're just throw a bunch of interesting things to make Quan Chi more interesting. It's just that narr mm -hmm. but narratively there's not really much there because we've already kind of seen his whole deal yeah. in the story. <laughs> all the all, all the really is to learn is we might learn a bit about his life before all this because we never we his, didn't get into uh, that like the show. His bio was leaked or released and I did see it. It's yeah. it's very small, but like you do see a little bit, yeah. Yeah. His bio uh, cracks uh, me up because it shows that he's like um his personality type is to always serve the strongest guy unless he can overthrow them and be become the strongest because <laughs> He's a slave in the mines, and when he learns about a slave revolt, his first instinct is not to help that. His instinct is to tattle to the boss man, so the boss man will help him. Because <laughs> like that's his brain, that's his personality type. Like he served Shinnok before. Here he serves the slave owner, and like literally tells on his own people, like his own fellow slaves. <laughs> sounds like <laughs> sounds like the Devora intro. Onaga Shao then Koto. What are these like people that you've like betrayed? Cons with the hives outlived. <laughs> that was one of the intro dialogues. Okay, can we talk about the queen? I want to talk about no. the queen. Yes. Oh my gosh, it's very funny to um, go on Twitter the first day that the Quan Chi trailer <laughs> dropped, and literally like 90% yeah. of people just do not give a shit about Quan Chi, and they're finding all those little snippets of like screenshots they can find of Chameleon. Chameleon runs out. Okay, we're gonna screenshot take that and then post it on twitter be like there she is yeah. guys there she is well because well, it's two things it's one is because Quan, again quan chi's been around so much in the recent series and it's just not interesting yeah. to see whereas chameleon again hasn't been seen since before most modern since most current mk fans were even into the series yeah so that's more interesting to see uh and also you, you also have the, the general MK Twitter people who are just obsessed over the female characters, so of course they're going to be like, yeah, like yas queen, queen, yas, yas. I love, I love that now. Like they're very obsessed with chameleons, like hairstyle too, the bob, the bob mm -hmm. hairstyle, and like there's some cutscenes the of her that's like uh, the old Tanya hairstyle, yeah, where it's like when she's moving, her hair will be like, whoosh, like very like far back and stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll send that later. Mm -hmm. um, she even does the Cleopatra pose. I'm not sure if intentional or not, but at the start of the round, she does the facing away and just kind of like turns to look at you, <laughs> which is the famous like Cleopatra pose from all the paintings and stuff. So she has a Cleopatra like haircut. She like shows Tanya, her back. Then... Yeah, she shows her back to her opponents, yeah. basically. It, the... may, maybe it's, maybe I, um... it's a reference to Reptile, because Reptile turns his back to his opponent before he turns around from his lizard button tail to he does. roar at people. So and he shakes that's... the tail. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. I got Okay, got to put Reptile and Chameleon <gasps> together. Then, just yeah, play the, them the together. Reference. It looks... Because some characters just look really good when you put them side by side. Like you get like I yeah. think in MVC three, if you put Dante and Virgil together in the right, the right order uh, before the fight, they're both like back to back and then turn towards the opponent. Oh, that's and it cool. It looks mm -hmm. so sick. So like you want to you want stuff like that. 
Like you want you want complimentary uh, intro and victory poses. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fun. Like some uh, of them work so well. Oh, what was it? oh, I want to mention mm -hmm. something funny more about the um, the Twitter situation. So yeah. Jade stands. I've noticed they're half and half. They're one half are people being mm -hmm. like, she's stealing her moves. Why? How dare you? And that's one half. The other half of people being like, well. That's our Jade representation in the game, guys. Time to stand her. Jade stands. Time to stand her right now. This is our new queen, basically. <laughs> that's that's what I noticed the, and, the situation there. Um, yeah, and here's the good thing, um, Jade fans. Keep in mind the other moves that she's stealing are characters that are in the game. So this could imply that at some point Jade's going to be in the game oh, very because she's only likely. using moves yeah. of characters that are in the game. You know what I mean? Um, I counted six moves in total, two for each character. So it is possible we saw all of her stuff, but I'm holding out hope that she has like at least a couple of chameleon specific moves that are just hers <laughs> and work in any form. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, but. I, yeah, I'm but, well, very... I don't, I don't think she has forms. I think she just changes color into that move. Oh, well, yeah. Dog means like even like regular chameleon with just, just like what, what she looked like before without being influenced by uh, The only reason I do think Jade. she changes forms, because you could be right, but the reason I think she does change forms is because we see two throws based on what color she has. Notice and that, there's no yeah. way they gave her different throw inputs because you can't. Unless it's down plus throw, but I'd be very surprised if she so, had a so, down so and thinking, up throw. So you're thinking she might be like Tremor with basically variations? That's what you think, I yeah. had three predictions. Um, they range from good to terrible because this could make <laughs> her a good cameo, an okay cameo, or a garbage cameo based on how she changes forms. Uh -huh. The first theory is like Tremor where you can pick. Yeah. That would be great, but we don't see her do that. That's the scary part. We never see her choose to change form. The second theory is that when you do the attack, it changes her into the other form at the end of it. Like she has one attack that doesn't change her forms, like when she gives the projectile immunity. But if you do her other Jade attack where she um, does like the glaive toss, that makes her change. That's another theory. Um, the third theory, which is the worst possible thing that could ever happen, it's a time is that she changes based on a timer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like has a little cooldown. It shows when she's gonna change to her next form. And that would be the worst because you'd have to wait for the the cameo move you want. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> so. I, I don't think it would be that, despite the fact that that would be the most lore accurate because that's what she was in Armageddon. Like that's how she played. Mm -hmm. Like you you get different moves based off of what color well, you well, are. Well, it doesn't matter how she played in Armageddon. How she played in, in MK Trilogy sixty four. That's the one Netherrealm cares about. Oh yeah. <laughs> And I think it was similar to that too, right? Where she would like change timer. Oh no. I actually don't I'm know just really, I think well, it's really well, cool no, that she well, has three she, she throws. Did, she That's really interesting. In, she didn't change colors in Trilogy. She was just gray the whole time. Yeah. So I, I think she could just use the moves. I think in that gotcha. case, they're basing this off of Armageddon way more than the the fact that they just keep changing the hue and stuff. I definitely prefer Snake's yeah, idea I mean, that she just always has the moves the, and just the, changes the, color based on the, the attack. On it that like would just make her really good, though. Great. Like, she'd be a top two cameo, like, not even kidding, because her Glaive Toss is just Serena's move, which is, like, the most overpowered, like, combo sender in the game. But it's better. Because it only hits twice, which means more damage in your combo. And also, it has such hits done, and you recover so quick after using her, that Quan Chi has time to charge up his attack before the opponent's even, like, able to escape the combo. So, imagine you're playing General Xiao. You hit the opponent, call in Chameleon's Glaive, buff your damage, and then still have time to keep the combo going. That's, like, very easily stuff that you could do. So, Sub-Zero's Freeze, or Frost Freeze, but without the downside of combo scaling. That's gonna be really good. Mm. Like I'm, I, yeah, I have no idea. That's why how I think there's good. some sort of gimmick, and she can't do them all at once. But like you said, Chameleon's gonna either be like pretty good or pretty terrible, depending on how mm -hmm. they approach her. Um, there was a good question Snake asked. I forgot if this is on Twitter or I think he said it's on Twitter. What's her skins? What's her skin? What's her color palettes like alternate gonna be? <laughs> because she literally changes that <laughs> in gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, and there's you are going like, to be able to unlock that. So there's, there's, not, there's not even a secondary color that changes. So unless that's just like the default, and the rest, you, the others are just like this one keeps her in one color the whole time, which probably not. I think I think the most likely thing probably is her actual skin color, white, transparent. You really think they're going to do that? Because that'd be cool, I, like blue I, and pink for her skin. Yeah, I just want clear. I mean, Everybody <laughs> wants clear, you know. Because <laughs> what else can you really? Clear would be do? cool for like the final level. She gets to be finally transparent. Yeah, yeah. I'll unlock her 15 for that. I mean, I'll get mastery 15 just for that. It's like, it's like, what it's else so can you slow. The cameos do? rank up so slow. <laughs> Wait, what were you saying, Snake? Uh, you got. Um, you you say, are, that's all. You, that's all you can. That's all you can realistically do with them for in terms of because her colors change and is a part of her gimmick. So if you're gonna have alternate color 
schemes, unless it just changes like the shade a bit, like, oh, this is the darker version, this is the lighter version, or this adds like another color to it. I don't know what else you can realistically do. Yeah. We'll see. I'm Good excited point. to see that in January. <laughs> Give her tattoos. Oh, different yeah, tattoos don't. based on what you pick? Like on her don't skin, like what Reptile has. Just give her like an actual green like tattoo <laughs> on her white skin. Speaking of, pretty dope. Speaking of that, I, I was chatting with my brother about like Chameleon and he's like, I'm not really a big fan of her because she just kind of copies like other characters' moves. But that's what she did in the original. That's like, that's, I, I think that's really cool. You know what I want to see? I want to see a female Zaterran. I wanted to see female lizard form. Okay, that's what I wanted to see. And I'm like, yeah, we have not seen her, her fatality yet. Hmm. <gasps> oh, that's perfect opportunity. I mean, but but the, the, come on now. There's already fan art of her lizard form. All right, come on, gotta spread this now. I, I, I don't <laughs> know what, lizard form. <laughs> what was her fatality in trilogy? She didn't have one. Oh, in trilogy, I'm not too sure. But I'm in Armageddon. She didn't have one. And in trilogy, yeah, did she have one? Maybe it's a really generic, just upper cup kind of a situation. Because because if she doesn't if she didn't have a fatality that means they have free license to do whatever but exactly i, I can't when find I saw chameleon about in trilogy i thought it was a mod i don't think she has one people are saying that she I, I doesn't have so. one like motaro yeah so motaro so, I had guess, one I guess they but it was dumb that. but i feel like i feel like it's more likely given the way a lot of fatalities are, con are constructed she'll do a katana move a melina move and a jade move don't do that. Just do like, 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 just like, turn to chameleon like, like, form. Like, like, she like stick the uh, she like stab him with the sigh, stick the staff right through the throat and out the bottom, and then like slice the throat uh, with katana. It could be like Jade's fatality in MK11 when she um, puts the staff through the mouth and then like slices them open with uh, her glaive, but instead it's the fan. Look, I'll be honest. If it's mm -hmm. a combination of like Jade, Melina, katana, fatality, that would be cool. But I just want a lizard form fatality. Here's what, Come on. <laughs> here's what I would do. Here's underdog's fatality for chameleon. Except for the lizard. That's the best one, obviously. But if we can't <laughs> do that, here's what I would do. Like, she runs at them, throws the katana fans, both arms chopped off, throws the melina size, and pins their feet down, similar to her deception fatality. But then she just leaps in the air, does the jade staff, and just shoves it through the mouth and, like, down, like, the that middle. That sounds pretty you cool. You know? Yeah. like, they're held in place. And there you go. That's all three of the weapons. You gotta keep in over. mind, though, <laughs> it's gotta be very simple because the cameo fatalities are very. What easy. if? What yeah, if? What if? What if? Like, um, go ahead. What if she she puts the staff through them, grabs it at both ends, turns into a lizard, and starts chomping on it like like there's oh like a, like a corn cob. <laughs> That'd be awesome. The uh, what if she does what Sonic? I'm sorry, what if she does what um Snake does, and she takes the size, combines them on the staff puts the fan on it somehow and creates some stupid uber weapon and just like <laughs> does some ultimate move super. with it. <laughs> the super weapon. Yeah. yeah. The, um, it's got the spinning fans on the side of the, the, the staff and like the sides are just firing beams in all directions. I, I got one, I got a good suggestion. What if just for her fatality, yeah. her costume turns red and yellow? So she uses like Scarlet and Tanya and like other female ninjas only for her fatality and stuff. A, a, bit oh. like how, a bit like how Shang Tsung didn't have Scorpion, Noob, and uh, Sub-Zero moves outside of his uh, his super move. Uh, or, if, yeah. Could be, yeah. Something like that. Could be. I Look, I'm just saying, I, I just I just want her fatality to, to show her lizard form. First off, for canonical reasons, because we need to see Chameleon mm -hmm. as a lizard form, and she doesn't do that. It'll be like, at the freaking point. But, if we see her lizard form... Then I can be able to like get a sexy reptile, a lizard form commission for uh, chameleon to exist in my video if that ever happens. <laughs> It'd be a cool touch if like after you kill the opponent, she just like her outfit changes to kind of like their color palette during the victory pose. Uh, so if you kill Scorpion, huh. she just has like a yellow outfit, <laughs> um, just the color. It'd be too hard to do, but yeah, there's a lot of cool. potential. Like I think I I I just see what they do and i actually would hope that this will get her like uh, more popular in the series and maybe she'll be her own character in the next game or something she really should have been she would have got more purchases than quan chi i feel like um they should have you know the worst case scenario is she just turns invisible and then kills them that's like the worst case scenario for a the, fatality here's the worst case scenario she just references some classic um reptile fatality no, cool no, the, the worst would be if it was just a random classic Katana or Melina fatality. Ah, <clears throat> uh, hmm. She just shoots the fireball from Armageddon when it lights them on fire. Ah, they just fall down. Because <laughs> she had that fireball kind of thing in Armageddon.
Yeah. Which I think, I think, was, I think that's one of Tanya's moves. Mm -hmm. Ah. All right, that was the Quan Chi yeah. trailer. Uh, overall, it's fun. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was. Um, my my eyes were on Chameleon the whole time. <laughs> uh, one minor thing I appreciated too. It's not a big thing, but they could have been lazy and just changed the hue of her outfit. But they went a bit further because, for Katana, her thigh, stockings, whatever, don't get darker. They get brighter. For everyone else, it's like base color and then darker color for the star stockings. But for Katana, it gets lighter. Oh, I just thought that was cool because it means somebody looked at it and went blue to dark blue doesn't look as good. Let's go blue to lighter blue and it just looks cool. That's like nice. someone actually did manually put the colors on. They didn't just like take the hue slider <laughs> and drag it, which I appreciate. I will say if the um, <laughs> if the alternate palettes actually change the color of her costume, that's going to be a very complicated fake character. <laughs> now it's going to be orange. And I look forward to... I look forward to the modders not only giving her the transparent skin, because that's super easy. You yeah! just turn off the alpha channel. That'd be fun. But um, on top of that, I look forward to the modders removing that stupid extra layer of pants she has underneath her stockings. Because that, I it's not just because she's more naked, but like it makes no sense to put stockings on top of your pants. Just looks really stupid. Like oh, just give her stockings? pants if you're going to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like the little straps, like they, they buckle at her hips and go down, but there's like legs that should be exposed there before the stockings take over. But she's wearing pants under her stockings just, uh, because that's what I just thought. Oh, okay. It is funny mm. how when you consider the fact that her actual costume doesn't fit the rest of the Umgadi because they have a very particular mm. style of dress, like the Black Panther-ish look. Mm -hmm. Clearly inspired she has by the her own design. Laje. And then she's she's she just rocks up with her own outfit and it's like okay, as long as you wear yellow, it's fine. <laughs> and Camille's like, I can literally change colour to the outfit whenever I want, so that's that, not gonna be a problem. <laughs> that's the thing though. It's like yeah, she is yellow in the story mode. It's like, is she is that not gonna be a color palette for her and you play as her? That that probably will be her fatality to be honest. She'll probably just go Umgadi colours and do a Tanya thing. Oh, that sounds so boring. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, she'll call really she'll boring. call in a bunch of other Umgadi and they'll team up and like Okay, people. that sounds more fun, but... So. but like, hit, hit, like, you know, you know when you get that... Cartoon, got, ooh, cartoon got, puff ball and punch sound effects. <laughs> like, <laughs> get that, that it, girls. They're just dead. The Umgadi who's, cl who's clearly, very, very clearly just Jackie Briggs. I remember that, yeah. You know that one? Yeah, yeah the hairstyle. Yeah, like they, yep. I think one is just Katana and they all just pop up and it's like, yep, they're going to show up and help out Chameleon. <laughs> There's a lot of potential for Chameleon's fatality. It's funny. It's like we came up with I mean, so many. I mean, okay, imagine if like she, she calls in like five Umgadi and like one one comes in with, with like a staff, one comes in with Sai, one comes in with a fan, <laughs> one comes in with a dagger. So it's like all the things Chameleon can copy, these all people also copy them. <laughs> Running oh. in. Or she splits herself into that many somehow. Like she just goes and like focuses and she just separates into separate people with each one of the abilities. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. She sheds her skin. It's, and it's too OP, and but she sheds her skin and the skin becomes a separate person. Oh, who does different lizard, moves. Lizard person. So shedding her skin. I kind of want like, someone uh, to make a funny comic now. Clone like, jutsu. You have that fan Sonic that always does little sketches of like little comic stuff. I have they to. They should do one of like Chameleon getting slightly cut. And someone being like, oh, we can repair that outfit. She's like, that's my skin! Because <laughs> like, oh. the outfit changes color with her. So now she's like, no, it's my skin! Like, that's just me! <laughs> I, will, I, will, uh, I will send that and see if anyone's interested in an idea. <laughs> like she rips her pants or something, and it's like, ow, my skin! <laughs> Chameleon getting slightly cut. And someone being like, oh, we can repair that outfit. She's like, that's my skin! <laughs> All right, so I guess we shall get right into the game awards dun, 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 dun. oh yeah i forgot another topic yay <laughs> the game awards Woo! now back to the beginning of the episode and if you're watching this video and you're like really young and you're like i already feel tired all the time stop that you're either eating really terrible food that makes you tired like fast food and stuff or you're relying way too much on these which saps your energy too because your body won't make any more if you already have it so it stops uh or you're just staying up too late. I like how Trona Dog has already like implied that we started recording, so he's already talking to the young audience. Hey, stop ah. it. Hey, guys, I'd be healthy. I wanted to wear my Tekken 8 jacket that I got from the event, but it's just too hot. Oh, yeah. I wanna, I wanna, okay, so just, just, you just so you guys know, I, I am very interested about your Tekken event there. because I've been And I can of... finally talk about it. Yay. I was sworn to silence for like a whole week and it was the hardest I've ever had to work not to talk. Because... Oh, so you're allowed to talk about, you're allowed to talk about what you get, went through. Yeah, everything now because the, the embargo ended at 6 a.m. So I already made my video and the gameplay is going to go live at noon, like my usual time. Okay. Um, yeah. 
it was like three hours of gameplay, dude. It was incredible. Cause yeah, I'm thinking like, cause uh, just I just saw like just 17 minutes ago, all of a sudden like one random Tekken channel. I'm, I I don't know when I was subscribed to them, but they they started uploading like Devil Jin and Lee and like Reina gameplay. And I'm like, what? Like, yeah, Devil I, Jin because um, it's clear that like they're trying to really do the whole devil versus devil thing in this game, right? So they uh -huh. gave Devil Jin new animations and stuff that are really Ooh. sick, and oh. the game added an auto combo feature for the normies to, just to make story mode Modern easier. controls, let's go Tekken. <laughs> yeah, I think and, uh, so. They added story. that, and if you just mash one button, you see some of Jin's cool new attacks, and he becomes like a, a movie. Like it's pretty crazy the animations they gave him. A movie. Like they're pretty sick. Like he had one attack where he like. Like, he, like, smacks you and, like, levitates you, and then, like, a bunch of, like, beams from behind him fire out and, like, hit you one at a time, like, pfft, like a machine gun, and then he just tosses you. And I'm like, okay, that's a brand new move. Before, cool. he just shot lasers, <laughs> and that was it. Do you think Devil Jin is going to be in the story mode this time, or is he just oh, yeah. going to... Oh, yeah. Okay. I, 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 have to at least I got to play story mode for a bit, devil. but we couldn't record it for some reason. What? Oh, you'd be able to just talk there. <laughs> They have to have like a, a phase during the final fight, so you know, because like the seven one is like five separate fights of Heihachi versus Kazuya, and it escalates yeah. each time. They're going to be a Devil Jin versus Devil Kazuya part. Okay, because like, I remember Devil Jin wasn't in the story mode in seven, right? But well, Jin yeah. was barely in it. He was in a comb for the majority of it. I mean, yeah, yeah. Actually, I thought Devil Jin canonically only appears like in four or something, and then after that, he never appears in the story mode, and you're only playing like a like an evil Ryu situation. Well, no, because hmm. Jin... Yeah, it's not really a... Um, Jin can control it since they... 6 or so. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh. But I meant, he like... He kind of can. He's not as good at it as Ka Kazuya. Yeah. Kazuya is, like, yeah. a complete master of his devil form. Yeah. Like, he's he 100%. It. Yeah. Devil Jin, it's implied, has a stronger devil form, but only if he, like, gives himself over to it, which is seen as, like, pathetic and being weak because okay. he can't control his own, like, gene. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like um, Evil Ryu or the Super Akuma. Kind of like Doctor Jackal and Mister Hyde too. Like where when Devil Jin takes over, he's just different. Um, yeah. So we'll see. That's actually unfortunately I can say this without being in trouble. I'm sure the story mode is not like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, I, but I, I mean that in a bad way. Like the I, I first some, five chapters were all Jin. What? Did you say something all Jin? Yeah. Like every chapter so far that I got to play was Jin. And it was annoying because other characters walk into frame. And because I'm so, like, you know, conditioned by Mortal Kombat, I think, oh, this character walked in for the first time. I'm going to play as them. Nope, you still play as Jen. Well, remember. Oh, no. here's a brand new character. <laughs> Surely I'll play as them. Nope, Jen. Remember, Tekken huh. 7 story mode only let you play as, like, five, like ten maybe characters? Six, maybe five or six. Yeah. I meant, like, ten it's characters the same problem in the again. story mode. But yes. Like, yeah, it's, you only play, like, five it, or six. Yeah, it's, it's pathetic. I mean, that, that's. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to it later. It's, it's fine. Yeah, and Snake, now I'm thinking I, I like saw a... your tweet how you replayed that game. I'm like, why did you do that to yourself? What, what's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so, why, why go through Sonic. that pain? Well, I'll I'm thinking of your amazing thumbnail. To. Yeah, what? I'm thinking of your amazing thumbnail, Sonic, which I think you had to censor because I guess they got mad at you and you had to add the Motaro, like, metal thing over his, like, crotch for Reptile, but I'm not sure oh! <laughs> if you had to, <laughs> had to add that or not. Okay. But, uh, uh, was that you, always you there or am I just, like, misremembering? So, the, the thing is... <laughs> I wasn't planning on putting it there. The reason I put it there was because Snake suggested it. Oh, okay. And it makes it more gotcha. funny. I think when I... Okay, but, I, I released that, like, uh, Reptile doing the Filthy Frank pose. Oh, and yeah. people were, like, yeah. thinking, oh, that's funny. Ha ha. And then I, I, I released a thumbnail with, like, kicking wheelchair sensor bar. And people were thinking, like, bro, what the hell? You straight up posted porn? What the heck? Oh, my gosh. NSFW. <laughs> oh, wow. That was, that was impressed. I'm impressed but, how that, like, is able to get people to react even more. So I think that, that actually worked out. It was pretty funny. <laughs> the reason I love that thumbnail in that video, though, is because it's a fan favorite character that never gets to, like, be the hero. So it's, like, kind uh -huh. of a, a fan fantasy, right? That's how I feel, like, about Tekken eight so far like i want to just put okay. yoshimitsu in the thumbnail and it's like yoshimitsu saves the tekken universe <laughs> it's just like yoshimitsu doing cool shit because he's, he's such a fan like favorite character you think so? and he's left out of the story mode like every time oh uh, yeah, yeah i guess because he's wacky and it's like how does he fit kind of like king like king's a wacky pro wrestler well, how does he it's, fit it's not strictly that because but... tekken is one of those where it's not like street fighter where it's like we're just gonna put like our Mika in the in the Shadowloo plotline. It's if the character doesn't have a purpose in the plotline, by and large, they're not going to be there. Which, on the one hand, yeah. is good because it means we don't have like King showing up and like fighting for the Mishima Zaibatsu, and he can get to do his own thing. But 
then how much focus does his plot get? And the thing is, King has the best <clears throat> ongoing narrative in the entire series. Yeah. Uh, we got sidetracked in Seven because uh, Marduk and Armor King weren't in the base roster, so all, all he gets to do is just fight Jack for a bit. But he has the best ongoing that- narrative, really, and you don't get to do anything in the story because he's not part of it. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Isn't King just not in Tekken Seven story, technically speaking? Or like, no, the, what, uh, what is even canon in the arcade endings? There is like we don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the arcade ending is super funny too because originally they didn't plan to add a lot of those DLC characters for Tekken Seven, which is why King has moves borrowed from Marduk and also Armor King because they plan oh. to never add them to the game. But that one DLC set sold so well that they're like, we got to keep going. Like people want more characters. And that's why, like, they got, they, they're they in the game now. So that means King just has their moves for no reason to an extent. And even in his arcade ending, he's like, this one's from Marduk. And, like, does it on the machine, right? This one's from Armor King. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, because I'm trying to so. think, like, Tekken 7 is a, a case that's very impressive from, like, a player base, like, game-wise. Because didn't the game start with, like, 20 or maybe less characters? And now it has, like, over 50 because of the DLCs. Oh yeah, maybe. And then Tekken 8's just starting off strong with a healthy roster yeah. of a lot of characters. Like, whoa. Yeah, a lot and of characters. And they did a really good job repurposing the animations in a way that still feels fresh. Like how Reina is definitely Heihachi. Like, a lot of those um, attacks are there. But they gave her new stuff, too. So it feels like, you know, an original character. Um, mm. Asuzina, terrible name, by the way. Like, that, that's going to be impossible. Like, you can tell when a character gets put in a game that, like, they're not going to last. And that name is, like, ridiculous. Could have just called her, like, Cena or something. Asu Zena, like, no one's going to want to say that. Is that cool? I mean, it's like you know, Fakum Ram all over again. It, yeah, it is, but, like, you still need to find a way to, like, make a name that's, like, generic, I feel like, Dog, you know? just call her Coffee Girl. Everybody calls her Coffee Girl. I call her Coffee Queen, yeah. Coffee Queen. Um, but, like, Fakum yeah, yeah, yeah. Ram was added to 7, and everyone just called them Fak. Because, like, <laughs> Fakum Ram is way too hard to, like, remember. Just call him Sagat. That's funny. He's also a dog shit design, though. If I'm, he's fun to play, <laughs> like crazy fun to play, but he's also a dog shit like. Fakurama is the gigantic, like Sagat. He's weirdo. the Sagat. Rip-off. Yeah, yeah, he's the weird yeah. body proportion Baki character, right, guy. The only yeah. thing cool about him is that, that giant scar on his body. Apparently, is from him getting struck by lightning at yeah. like an earlier age, and it almost killed him. And that's why when he powers up, like a little lightning comes off of him, and I'm like, that's sick. They should have done more with that, and then he would have actually been unique. But. Second- <laughs> I, I recently watched like an entire video of like all the Tekken 7 characters and their playstyle and stuff, and I'm like, here we have this character. I'm like, who? Ooh. Oh, <laughs> new character in Tekken 7. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, now, to sure. be fair, the default Tekken characters nailed it. Like, for the first six games, I, I really liked pretty much every character they made. I even like Bob, despite first him being the most games. stereotyped uh, American ever. Yeah, Bob is Bob's cool. I mean, well, well, Bob's got the gimmick of he, he's fat just to have... Uh, but More power. Uh, p- power behind his speed, More but impact. he's, he's, he's yeah. still fast. So and it's like he's Bob, fast. Yeah, Bob, Bob's like kind of cool, and, it, yeah. and it, it really helps that he was added right around the same time as Rufus in Street Fighter, where it's like yeah, because oh. like you know because they have perfect falls for each other because Rufus is absolutely detested, and then you yeah. compare him to Bob yeah. and it's like Bob's kind of cool, so it just makes People Bob like look Bob. way better. <laughs> <laughs> and just in case True. you guys aren't aware. Um, Bob was unironically really good in the first game he debuted in. Like, mm. Bob was the Leroy of that game. In top eight, like, oh, okay. seven people were using him. He was, like, the definite pick. And what's funny about that is I feel like Bob was um, partially, at least, meant to be a joke character. Yeah. Like, oh, here's a really fat guy doing, like, crazy over-the-top flips and stuff. So he's meant to be somewhat of a joke character. And they made him crazy good. Like, just, I think, by accident. <laughs> like, they didn't realize how strong it is to have a a Mishima style like uppercut move that tracks to both sides and is safe on block. They didn't realize how nuts it is to give him a, a regular fast jab that tracks to both sides and can't be stepped. Like he was pretty much a, you have to deal with me character, which is nutty. <laughs> There's a whole video breaking it down. It's super funny. Cause they add the Giga Chad face <laughs> and they explain why he's so <laughs> oh, good yeah. with it the list of stuff. <laughs> You know, I find it kind of funny that we accidentally just started getting into Tekken. One of the topics yeah. we had was Reyna. So Sorry. you guys want to just sort of talk about her in a bit? Yeah. Well, yeah, sure. we got to start. Do you want us to actually start the podcast? or? <laughs> I mean, we, or... I'll, I'll put this in somewhere in the episode. Just like, we might as well. Okay, you want to talk about Reyna, you said? Yeah, yeah. What do you guys think about her and stuff? Uh, she, <laughs> new but, character from a month ago. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's clear the intention is that Harada's like, I don't want to not have Heihachi in my game. He has to be in the game, but he's thrown into lava. What can I do? I know. Let's make it make him a teenage girl, 
and then it, and then I can have like secret fuck fantasies about Heihachi without it being gay. Yo. Oh. What? <laughs> okay. That, that, they that's didn't that, let us. That, that's, um... that's an ancient bit from the Spoony one that I just stole. I see. The Spoony one. They did not let us um, record story mode, which is why I imagine okay. they're going to drop their own story mode stuff or something. Yeah. Because otherwise, I don't get why we couldn't record it because we played it. And I can just say one thing for sure. Reyna is not a reincarnation or anything like that. She is 100% no. just a illegitimate child. Yeah. As far as you um, know, I can confirm that. I mean, Tekken 7 had some <laughs> dumb plot twists relating to Heihachi, so I wouldn't be surprised if it does turn out that that is the intent. Some M. Bison If they do that, that would shit. only be if Reyna herself did not know that she's reincarnated. Because, mm. like, you can hear her thoughts. Like, she talks to herself and narrates in story mode, so, like, when oh, so no one's around. Okay. So it's she's clearly, like, her own thoughts. And it's very clear, like, her origin and, and stuff and all that. Um, and she does have that jury personality, so Snake nailed that, because there's, like, some points where she, like, she'll let the mask slip and just kind of go and stare all, like, evil at the camera. But it's because she's Heihachi, right? Like, personality-wise. Okay. Because apparently, according to video game logic, if you train in someone's fighting style, you just get their personality. Because <laughs> that's just how that works. They gotta copy Heihachi's personality somehow now, since that he's he's passed away. So the the true successor to Heihachi, not the not the four or five other uh, illegitimate. Well, yeah. <laughs> I also want to add that um, she has an alternate costume, which is like a thirst trap slash um, K-pop outfit. So my K-pop joke was like right on the money because she wears like literally a. Like a, a tank top where the top is all just netting, and it's got some tears on it. Oh, so and then like one. she has a really short like spanks that you would dance in on stage, <laughs> and she has like the boots. So she looks like a K-pop star like a hundred percent. So that <laughs> meme is real. That's a cool outfit too. I was wearing that one when yeah, I was playing I, her. Yeah, I saw this. I like this one because I, I think Reyna is quite a basic design with her with her default. But like I, I like this skin. I think this one is kind of it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Now I'm interested. And in that she hundred percent has Heihachi's moves. Once you start playing her, you're like, oh yeah. Like, these are just Heihachi's moves. Like, his annoying axe kick where he just, like, picks his foot up and slams it down, and then it's an overhead. <laughs> like, she has that. She has the headbutt, which is incredible. So glad she has that. Uh, I guarantee she'll get his costume, too. Honestly, yeah, that makes sense. Now you D put it that do way. it. Do it, Namco, but don't give her a bra or anything. Just have it, like, barely not showing titties. <laughs> no, <laughs> give, give, her, is, give, her, is, give her the Heihachi hair. The, I think that would be really funny. You, just, you know they're going to give fun. her the, it'll be the black gi, even though she would look way better with the classic, you know, like, when he's got, like, the like samurai pants and, like, no shirt, but, like, put, like, a, a wrapping around it, around a chest. Oh, but I otherwise see. Otherwise, it's, like, it's oh. that outfit. Like what geese wore. Okay. But yeah. it's, it's even better if you go back to the original Tekken 2 color scheme where it was where it was purple instead of blue. Because there's a callback oh. and it suits her color scheme. Because so she's her, purple too. Because her, her name is Rain uh, and she wears purple. Mm -hmm. For a, that's pretty good. There you go. Pretty nice. <laughs> For a second, I thought you were going to say, Snake, that she should wear the Tekken 4 Heihachi <laughs> outfit where he's just wearing the sumo <laughs> diaper and like that's oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's an they, they always classic. bring that back, right? In, in the, uh, I understand that's like a, a big deal culture-wise, right? Yeah. But as a dumb American, when I saw that, I was just laughing. I'm like, this is how you're going to come out to look um, imposing? <laughs> hey, Hachi, just wear a diaper, old man. <laughs> but I get it. I get the significance of it. It's like, I'm not wearing any weapons. It's just me versus you. Like, yeah. I, I get it, but it still makes me laugh. Because he could do the same thing just wearing, like, underwear <laughs> to achieve yeah. the same goal like i'm not wearing any weapons and it's like okay i got you it, i still wouldn't trust it hey hachi's the kind of guy to hide a weapon in his mouth like true just like guys the guy yeah it's, it's funny how <laughs> he'd hide a there. gun in his hair it's, like it's a tiny little handheld pistol the uh the rainer thing is because it's, it's straight up jury han and hey hachi mishima as a single character like the intention is clear <laughs> come on <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. I think I think if the funny thing about Reyna is I look at her design and I'm like, well, she seems okay. I I personally find her probably gonna be one of the more forgettable characters. Mishima. Ooh. 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 <laughs> I think that alone is what gets everybody kind of like hyped up for Reyna. I'll be like Mishima. Ooh. <laughs> What's that? Ooh. Yeah. I think they did, they didn't want to spoil it right away. They wanted, but people still figured it out like oh, day, day one. one like the, all the references, right? <laughs> Yeah. Because, like, she's sitting on the throne and all that. I kind of almost wish, since it's so obvious... Oh, but no, story reasons. So, story reasons, nobody knows what she is except for her. So, okay. that's probably why they gave her that cutie-looking design by default, where she looks more innocent. Hmm. So, I, I kind of do want an evil reveal costume, where she just looks way more dark. <laughs> and yeah, even has yeah, some yeah. spiky hair. <laughs> yeah, well, but 
We will see. Arena is a character I want to wait till like the story mode is over before I judge her. Because I really think there's... You never know how things could change. But for now, it's interesting. It's always always, always fun to see another Mishima and, the, and the mix into the, the mess yeah. Tekken story. <laughs> do, do you have an idea who the arcade <laughs> mode final boss is? We weren't allowed to play it. Okay. Ah. That was, we that could only play story us. mode first. And so I think I wonder, they wanted us to just get a feel mode. for the auto combos. Maybe. Maybe. What's that? It'd be really, it'd be really cool if they brought back Devil Kazuya as a play- He's not been an actual properly playable character since Tag 1. No, Tag 2's weird prologue thing on the PS3 that came with the CGI movie. That's the last yeah, time he was played. That definitely could be it. That definitely could be like the final boss because it would make sense for what I've seen in story mode. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Because Kazuya oh. definitely is just like the new big bad. Okay, uh, um, yeah, I, I can see why. Or the returning big bad, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and I how? laughed really hard at what he does. Like he makes it to where society, like, is ruled by how be- how good your strongest fighter is. So each country has like their representative. <laughs> and if your country does well in the tournament, you get like rewards. Like you'll get financial support and stuff. But if you have like a trashy fighter, then your country's weak. So like okay. you don't get anything. That Only that sounds like stupid tech that I like. <laughs> that kind of plot line there. I, I kind of like where this is going already. <laughs> to be fair, like it, it's stupid, but the line he says at the start actually resonates really well. He goes like, "Your leaders can't even defend you. They can't defend themselves. <laughs> Us as a species have forgotten how to fight." He's like, "I'm bringing that back," and I'm like, "He's not Damn. wrong. <laughs> He's not wrong." Like back in the day, our leaders used to be like generals and stuff from the army, so like at least they were tough. Now we have like squishy people for our leaders who run back, away at the first sign of danger <laughs> back in ancient times right. this is a uh, caveman times <laughs> well even like george washington was like a pretty imposing badass yeah, yeah, and he yeah. was like our first ruler of america you know napoleon was a badass um despite all the short memes he was a badass <laughs> uh so i that was the thing for a while like i don't think that like of course might makes right or anything i just like it as a, a meme like something in your body is like this is kind of right. It's like when Senator Armstrong has his, I was gonna say his line in, you know, in Rising Revengeance. Like, he's not right, but some of the lines he says, you're like, yeah, that's a good point. Like, when he brings up celebrity like worship bullshit, and you're like, yeah, it's true. I feel like it's difficult for most Americans to see Armstrong and not, and not at least for a minute think, I'd vote for him. <laughs> I vote for him just for the memes. Especially when you see like, that image of him where he's like stood in front of like a, a waving American flag. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only issue is the, is the trafficking kids' organs. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Unfortunately, it's kind of a yeah. deal breaker. It's, it's a little too bad. Too bad. <laughs> kind of <laughs> a deal breaker. <laughs> but, but yeah, we played story mode. Then we played verses for a bit because I finished story mode like really quick. So then I had to do like just verses mode against to, the right? AI. Hmm. How much you're allowed to play the story mode? You didn't finish only the first entire... four chapters. Okay. And we weren't allowed to record. So then you finish and go to versus mode. And then once everyone's caught up, we were allowed to do a new mode that you'll see at like noon today. I can talk about it because the um, embargo's lifted. It's pretty okay. cute. It's like, imagine like the me characters from Nintendo Wii. Uh-huh. Like, right? Although they're more like actual people. It's more like the um, Xbox 360 avatar. Yeah, yeah kind of we thing. saw that. Yeah, they're, You can make the characters the and walk tour. around, right? But yeah. there's a full story mode around it. So like you meet the people at your local oh. arcade. And they each have their own personality, and you can challenge them to fights. And then a tournament is hosted, and the one guy at your arcade is like, he actually backs it up to an extent. He's the toughest AI, but um, he's a little cocky a-hole. Like, he'll pretend to be nice, but he has thought bubbles saying, hey, 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 I'm going to destroy these clowns. They have no idea, like, <laughs> um, what true fighting game skill is. And then, of course, like, before the tournament begins, um, or before, like, the next day when the tournament starts, you watch like a different tournament on the screen, like a stream, and it's like, oh, it's so and so, the best fighter like in the area, and like he looks like Kazuya, like has the permanent <laughs> scowl and like the the edge lord hair, like a Yu-Gi-Oh character, and he wins the tournament match on on stream, right? And then you all go home, and the next day you compete in a tournament, and that dude shows up. <laughs> and he does the, the the anime cliche. It's like, oh, it's him, he's here, and he goes, This was a waste of time. I came to this tournament to see if anyone actually knew how to play, and I was wrong. And he just leaves. Wow. <laughs> so, like, he's the new, like, big bad. So it's, like, Freaking legit Saturday characters. morning cartoon, but, like, Tekken. <laughs> and it's so adorable. So are they? Are these characters, 
like you make them yourselves and you like pick a move set from like the existing character kind of like street fighter 6 situation no you just play the characters so like your character is a human and you just play the tekken characters on consoles like you go into the arcade and just just play oh them. okay so you pick a ex- yeah okay, okay. Gotcha, you customize gotcha. your own guy but you just walk around and like in the world so you, you don't get to get- customize your own fighter or learn stuff or anything like that you just pick your character um but what's cute is they have like the like for example one of my favorite characters in the game who you can fight is this adorable girl and she plays characters that she thinks looks cute and it even says like don't you just love customizing the characters and so when you fight her she always has like really customized characters that are all wacky and different looking oh. than their default because that's what she likes so like it matches the lore of her character to like customize people yeah, Tekken, Tekken's customization is insane. It is insane how much you can make your character look. It like is, yeah, it's pretty the awesome. Funniest thing ever. So, so the mode is kind of like, um, like Street Fighter Six's lobby, but as a story. Oh yeah, like the the, the battle yeah, hub is that yeah, what it's called? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And you can travel to different zones. We weren't allowed to go to Zone Two. We had to skip to Zone Three, which is like an underground looking arcade with like black lighting and stuff. But the gimmick is it's all ghost battles. You guys probably know what ghost battles are, yeah. but like basically the game will build an AI based on how you play and then okay. people can play your ghost. So yeah. oh, um, okay, okay. that's what it was. And I was playing a lot of ghosts of different people and just saying, never lost, never <laughs> lost. <laughs> Step your game up, people. I was bodying you with Yoshimitsu. No, oh my goodness. I can do this. I can beat him. I know I can. Prison stancer, I lost. Aw, oh, man. Never lost. Step your game up, people. I was bodying you with Yoshimitsu. Now I'm kind of looking forward to this part of the story in Tekken A, because now we have two story modes in a way. <laughs> yeah, you do. And it's so quirky and adorable. I hope it, it keeps going places. I hope that it's not like... I'm hoping we didn't play half of it already. <laughs> There's just did, like one more section, like, and that's it, you know? <laughs> did you play the beach volleyball Tekken game mode? I did not. Um, I uh, did watch okay. people play it. I like, kind of screen hopped oh, and saw okay. some people playing it, and it looks like fun. It's gimmicky nonsense. <laughs> D- uh, yeah, so, yeah. So I've seen I've seen leaks of another mode. Did you see this uh, this other mode? It's very different from normal st- stuff. Oh, I think I know which one you mean. Like the what got leaked. Yeah. And it looks very similar to a, a fan requested mode. I know nothing about that. We weren't shown that, oh, okay. and we weren't allowed to play it. Okay. In fact, one I guy. I have no idea what you guys are talking about now. <laughs> wink, wink, snake, say... wink, wink. It's, it's okay. just, yeah. uh, just. Mm. In say, fact, even um, okay. there was a part where like the guy on stage, who y'all seen before? He's like the blonde guy that sometimes translates for Harada. He was explaining uh... to us the um, the stuff right on stage, <laughs> uh-huh. and after he was done, one of my uh, one of the other YouTubers, it may have been um, Kenny. He was like, I wanted to oh. ask him about blank, but they never brought it up. So I was like, probably not going to talk about that because I didn't even mention it. So I guess it's still meant to be a secret. And so, yeah. <laughs> was Harada there though, actually? I'm kind of curious. Oh, yeah. I got oh. to talk to him. He was at the after party and he was either just really happy or a bit buzzed. I couldn't tell which one. <laughs> I was very buzzed because they had an open bar and like you just naturally keep ordering drinks as you're chatting. I was talking to the cosplayers. They were very nice and friendly, which I know they're paid to be. But I think they're also just genuinely nice people because they were bringing That's up awesome. fun, like, personal stuff and all that. Like, the one cosplayer was a streamer, and she brought up how Lives of, uh, Lies of P made her cry because it was too hard. <laughs> 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 and I, I believe it. And I'll, I'll then the uh, Kazuya cosplayer too. showed me his Ryu cosplay, which he's, like, born to play Ryu. He looks way more like Ryu than Kazuya. Um and then I talked to Harada because he's just on the couch like um, with one other guy and like it was a big open couch so I sat down he was very polite and nice I brought up Yoshimitsu and I think all he said was oh Yoshimitsu hard to balance and I was like yes <laughs> yes indeed yeah. and he's so wacky <laughs> yes indeed I should have been like don't worry about balancing him just make him really good <laughs> nobody will care just make him like top three no one's gonna like because he's one of those few characters that like even if he was broken i feel like you'd never get tired of seeing him because he's so goofy and over the yeah. top whereas you get bored of watching kasumi from seven real quick because she's just a straightforward striking character for the most part hmm. yeah and it's like this isn't fun to watch it's the same three attacks over and over again but yoshi flipping teleporting stabbing Spinning. himself <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm, is this all in the video, like, coming up soon? I'll, I'm, I'm going to break it up into pieces because it's, like, a three-hour-long-plus cor- recording session. So I'm breaking it up okay. into pieces. The first video is just going to be me playing Yoshimitsu for the first time and just having fun. 
because yes. every character is pretty similar to Tekken 7, but to make it fresh and require learning, one, there's the heat system, which is very confusing and going to take a while for people to understand. Okay. But also, they change the properties of moves. So a lot of moves that used to extend combos and make the opponent do a little tailspin and they'd fall onto the ground for a follow-up, those yeah. don't do that anymore. Hmm. So like you have new combo extenders that you have to use. And every character got new attacks. Their armor move is different. Yoshimitsu's armor attack used to be his like little shoulder shove, and then he'd run on his swords. <laughs> they don't use that for the armor anymore. It's still there. His armor move instead is his kick, like his little front kick. That's his new armor move, which is actually good because he can charge that, and if he charges it, it's plus on block. So you're kind of like daring the opponent to press a button because they'll get hit either way. <laughs> what, were you allowed to play all the characters? Yes, the whole roster was oh, there. Oh, so it's like, a, it's like kind of a complete build then. Wow. Yeah. The game's pretty awesome. much done. They're just polishing it, which I, I respect. They're always kind of about that, um, Namco, Bandai. They're always like, this game's going to be released when it's done. So give it time to be done. That's good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm honestly, I don't know. Recently, I've been getting really into Tekken. I'm probably going to buy Tekken 8 too. Just try it out. Mess around. I want a lore oh. reason why Steve is fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's really funny because out of every character that's returned, it's like, oh, you look better. You look like the same. While wow, Huawei, you took off your stupid eye patch, got your red hair back. That's awesome. Steve. <laughs> so, Huawei is so freaking cool looking now, dude. Like, I'm such a fan. Back uh, to his roots. I was kind of mad back when he shows roots. up in story mode because I wanted him to have a huge moment, and he, he's just there to get jobbed. And I'm uh, like, oh, damn it. But he's so cool. Oh, classic wow. Huawei. Uh, Go ahead. I, I have a question. Um, how were the load times? Because this has been a serious issue since like six. They're they're fast. They're what you expect. Like you pretty much just see get ready for the next battle, and it shows the character portraits for like three seconds, and then the game starts. Can oh, you, right, so, like, can you not use the character? Speed. Can you not ex ex emote with the character portraits? <laughs> no, they're just a flat image, <laughs> like with uh, Tekken Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah unfortunate. That. That'd be cool if you could. I would love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Soul Calibur, make him yell. It's, 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 ah! one of, it's one of the things where it's like I, I'll I'll take that that loss if it means the low time it doesn't take fucking forever to load that last couple of games because holy shit those low yeah. time six was worse admittedly but like six and seven both had horrendous load times. It's kind of you a can also rematch. I forgot that you couldn't do that in Tekken 7. You had to like go back to the character select. You could actually rematch now. You just like just hit rematch and and you're good to go. Good. So. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> So o just starts the game. <laughs> overall, uh, how would you compare this game to Seven? Uh, so Tekken games always feel a, a bit similar with each yeah. sequel, and that's on purpose because they don't want to alienate the player base, right? Yeah. So in that regard, it feels like Tekken Seven got a graphics update, but the heat system is a whole new thing. Like it's got so many layers to it. It's weird. Um, to explain heat, basically you activate it with several strings or attacks. Like for every character, it's different. So you gotta experiment what your character can do to start heat. And what it does is on hit, you're, the opponent gets stunned and you sprint at them, right? You've probably seen it during trailers and stuff. Oh, and when you sprint okay. at them, that's pretty much a force to block situation. Like, I don't think you can even armor out of that. You might be able to sidestep, but I doubt you can even do that. It's pretty much like a, a you're forced to guess situation. And that's gonna be really good for grapplers, I think. Like, just oh. imagine King headbutting you and just sprinting at you, and you now have to guess between throw or attack. That's going to be really strong. The, um, I got a question about... Uh, I, I noticed, like, when characters are fighting and stuff, it's like... In, in Tekken 7, it's like, you get your... What do they call the ultimates? Just, like, the... The rage art, yeah. Okay, you get the rage art when you're almost dead, right? You, that's when you yeah. can use it. But isn't there also, like, a new move that's just, like, all of a sudden, like, when you use it, it's, like, the camera close up to the character, and he turns, like, really blue. Like, ha sha sha And then it, like, has, like, an armor move that hits the opponent or something. That's the heat. Yeah. That's the there's heat. There's, like, okay. there's two different okay. kinds of heat. There's, like, ones you can combo into, and then, like, it activates. And there's some where, like, it does a little cinematic thing, like you're saying. And, like, you'll yeah. hit them with a big armor move, and then, like, you'll get heat that way. And then you're in heat, and it slowly starts to drain. And yeah, while in heat, you just get, like, a better character. Like, you're, you got access to new stuff oh. and all that. So it's and you can choose to either... Okay, I always thought it was just an ultimate. Yeah, it's like a state. Up, it's like a powered-up okay. state, like being Super okay, Saiyan, okay. pretty much. And once it, um, when the meter is still there, you can choose to either cash it out and do another kind of cool run cancel move or end a combo with it for a big amount of damage with like a big cinematic kind of ender. Or if you're enraged, like you're low on health, you can do the super, like the big like cinematic super. Okay. 
Yeah, because and most, that's pretty most... much your your main options. And there's more than just that. That's the crazy part. Like it's a really complicated system. I think Tekken Eight is the only fighting game that did not get simpler with the sequel. Cool. Like they just added more stuff. <laughs> yeah, because because most of the time I see the heat move, I'm always it's always like the opponent's about to punch them and it just be like. Nah, -uh. <laughs> and it like instantly hits back because they have armor with that and stuff. That's what I mostly see. So I'm mm -hmm. glad to see there's more to that then. And I think I never did that once actually in my recording. I feel bad. They had like a, a binder with these laminated pages of each character, and you could turn to see what the notes were for your character. <laughs> and they had a like binder? a basic bread and butter for your character. Huh? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, just like little notes to help you out when you're trying to learn like a character, and because they're different. Like Yoshimitsu had a brand new string. And that new string is, like, required for his combos. So thank goodness it was on the notes. Um, <laughs> and his best ender is, like, his heat cash out, which is so smart. Because now, like, his number one ender leads to more stuff. That was very smart of them to do. Uh, yeah. He lost a lot of his extenders, though, which made me sad. Like, his uh, helicopter move and all that are different. Uh, and I was like, no, my strings. The and, classic helicopter. Um, Y'all know Rip. He's another big, like, commentator. He also plays Tekken. And he's, like, a streamer. Rip was playing Law, and Law uh -huh. had the same problem. Like, he got new stuff, but his old stuff doesn't work the way it used to. And he's like, oh, man, I lost some of my favorite, like, combo roots <laughs> and stuff. Interesting. Law so. is... Uh, all I know about Law is that he's one of the beginner-friendlier characters, so people like to pick him up because of that. Oh, he's a Bruce Lee parody, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too, of course. Yeah. <laughs> he, his life gets worse in every game is also a meme. Like, he just <laughs> gets crapped on. <laughs> That doesn't show any sign of stopping, according to story mode. <laughs> good, good for him. Him and Paul, good for them. Good for them. <laughs> Paul's moving up. Paul's moving oh, up in the world. Okay. Yeah. I want to see how he goes. Which he should. He Paul goes. used to be cool. Like, Paul was always kind of silly, but he was, like, actually tough. That was, like, yeah. part of his character. He used to, I think in Tekken 2, or Tekken 1, he fought uh, Kazuya to a standstill. Yep. Like, they're supposed to be hand pretty even. Yeah, basically. They're yeah. Now, play, of course, yeah. Kazuya can cheat because he has the devil nonsense, but... And then he's after got the, the anime time, plot after armor. After the time skip, they're just like, nah, he's just a joke character now. And it's like, well, no, he yeah. still he still did stuff in Tekken three though. But that's mm. another yeah thing. Yeah, but well, he still like played as a joke, like what he does in Tekken three. It's like, yeah, uh -huh. I won the I won the tournament. I'm going home. Oh, the guy you beat up just gets back up. I I guess you didn't win the tournament. Oh, he's like, damn, <laughs> yeah. time to start drinking then. It's like. <laughs> There's some uh, debate over that, too, because uh, someone got really mad at me in the comments, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is the the belief, but I, I could be wrong. I thought it was implied that he did defeat Ogre, but yeah. then, like, as he was transforming is when Paul left. Then he became true Ogre, or, like, yeah, which like, is just now yeah, called Ogre. Yeah, that's kind of what happened. But they're saying, no, all that happened was he knocked Ogre down, and Ogre got back up and was fine. And I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure he beat him. Um, yeah, but that's yeah. just my, yeah, that, that my impression. I, mean, I don't the think it's four or five. They 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 show that it's like it's, what the heck? I defeated him. Why am I not getting the glory and stuff? I, I don't think it's stated outright yeah. that 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 is exactly what happened. But the fact that Olga has two forms, one of which he switches into and he loses a round, the implication is pretty clear that yeah, Paul beat Ancient Olga, then he becomes True Olga, and then Jin goes through, which is funny because it implies that Paul may have beaten Jin in the tournament if he got to fight Olga first. Yeah, I think I'm um, Huarang, and the actual lore is supposed to be that Huarang and Jin eliminated each other. It was a double knockout. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, which is badass. Coming up, but well, that's the exact. Like, Huarang is actually very similar to Paul in that he is this cool biker martial artist guy who fought the like the, mm -hmm. the at the time main Mishima to a draw and was his rival, and then becomes a fucking punk bitch who loses all the time afterwards. <laughs> It's just that yeah, like, Huarang so isn't annoying, as dude. Huarang hasn't been paired up with the, with a bear yet, and he's not trying to fight aliens, so it's not as explicit. But like, <laughs> paired up he, with a bear, he, he gets taken out with, right. with hey, a those aliens grenade. were sweating. Instead of he gets taken those out with a grenade, he puts scared. on an eye patch. It's like, it's, it's, <laughs> yep, it fucking sucks. I'm very happy as I got healed up. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, <laughs> what's well, Tekken, man? Anything can be robotic. He probably has like a robot eye or like some insane oh, plastic surgery. Dude, that's... Anything can be fixed. But yeah, it's sad you mentioned that because um, I really hope I'm not in trouble for mentioning um, story mode stuff. I don't think I am because why would we be allowed to play it if we can't talk about it now? But um, so Jin is going through like a he's weaker, but it's because he's suppressing the, the devil form. And it's implied that okay. that's like changing it, which is good. Like it's making it like a better force or whatever. But it, in the meantime, he's weaker. 
that's like pretty established. So then in the tournament, like the stupid world tournament that Kazuya is hosting, where like each country has their representative, mm-hmm. Huarang gets matched up with Jin. And it's even ah. mentioned that in the previous fight, he defeated the opponent in one hit. It's like, whoa, a single hit and knockout. And Huarang is like, just popping his neck and just walks off. So Huarang is at like his peak. He's never been this good before, and, right? And we, and we don't know who in the Huarang arena. defeat, right? Yeah, he even hops in the arena ahead of schedule like it's you're not supposed forced. to just to face Jin. <laughs> and then guess what? Still loses to Jin when Jin's weaker and Huarang's at his strongest point. And I'm like, no, this is dumb. This should have been the one time where Huarang gets to win and he's like, hey, Jin, I noticed something different about you and I'm, I'm excited to see what it turns into or something. No, no. Instead, he just loses anyway. Brand yeah, new they, look, badass introduction, loses. And that's like that the thing Fighter, about story mode like, that's bothering me. <laughs> Like Ken <laughs> defeats Ryu and he's like, "Yo, what's up, Ryu? What's what's up, man? Why why, why are you yeah. why, what's what bothering you yeah. stuff?" Yeah, Ken, you know, yeah. Um, wh- who did you say just then, Snake? That he he defeated? He played Forest because because remember what in um in Lily's prologue in, in Dark Resurrection, like she, it's like oh like she beat <laughs> ah. up some guy and like stole his invitation to the tournament, and if you look at the guy, it's clearly Forest Law. <laughs> so, <laughs> poor, poor law <laughs> it, 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 it's like the uh, American sports team in KOF where they're always getting beaten up by some other team to, to steal their invitations <laughs> yeah oof yeah well um, it could be worse he could be DLC <laughs> <laughs> true a lot A lot of these characters are just gonna be like oh we missed out on this sorry about that DLC 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 seems like that's <laughs> I won't say what it was but they already leaked the DLC somehow like apparently we just live in the age of nothing oh, being safe because used to Namco was pretty good about that, like hiding their their DLC. Nope, nobody's safe now. <laughs> Is it? Uh, are they all Tekken characters, or do they also show like the guest characters? Can't remember. I, I only noticed the ones that I cared about. <laughs> I think it's how that works. Like I had tunnel vision, and I only cared about the names that that I liked. I think they were all returning characters and one new character. Like a new Tekken character, okay. Brand new Tekken character, because they had a name, I googled it, and it's the name of like a historical Japanese figure, so I'm guessing they're not actually that figure, they're just named after them, but it's like a, a Japanese warrior, um, and like, so that that's the character's name, and I'm like, okay. oh, okay, and they've been in other games too, so like, that, that character's name at least is famous, so Yo, we'll see what they do with Minamoto, that person. who was, what, was, what Liu Kang was going to be called originally. Oh, that's interesting. Or like a Kotal Khan instead of being like Quetzal Khan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or whatever his name is, Quetzal. I forget the name of the actual Aztec uh, god. Oh, okay. Quetzal. 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 Uh, Quetzal. Quetzal. That's right. Yeah. Quetzal. Quetzal. Yeah, that's what it was. Which yeah. is one of the funny Quetzal thing. is how like Devora names says. It's, it's, his it's, his one name. of the, it's one of the funny things because Quetzal is uh, in universe the inspiration for the the god Buluk. Like he like he is the basis <laughs> for that guy. Yeah. It's like, well, why not huh. be Quetzal Quetzal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is weird because like, he's definitely Quetzal, named after him. Quetzal, even Quetzal, Quetzal. It's like can he just be? Oh, they misunderstood my name, and then I became this this god to them. And this is, it would make more sense than Buluk, but I guess maybe the the writer thought, yeah, maybe they're going off what that character that figure is like. I don't know. Man, there's that I YouTuber just, who makes fun of historical inaccuracies in like Greek mythology and stuff, and he did one for Mortal Kombat where it's like they'd have a character based on something, but didn't just name completely wrong. And then, it, or they just didn't follow the lore at all. Like, Raijin is nothing like Raiden, like, at yeah, all. Yeah. And Fujin's nothing like Fujin. Because um, they're like, they're like um, godly deity looking people when they're actually demons in the lore. Like, they're scary looking. Hmm. Um, but they're not like that in the game. Then it's like, oh, who's this guy? Oh, so he's going to be inspired by um, Quetzal Khan. Uh, oh, great. He's going to look like really dumb. No, actually, we're going to nail his design pretty spot on. He's going to look pretty close to um, Quetzal Khan, but we're just going to change his name completely. Huh? <laughs> so that's how the video <laughs> ends, <once>? right? <laughs> yeah, but I was like, no, that makes sense, actually. Everyone in the comments is like, for one, there's no way a regular person can pronounce those names. And they're right, because his names are actually, um, his attacks are like Aztec words, and they're already hard enough <laughs> to pronounce. Oh, so like, I can't okay. imagine. I blame the spelling, though. There's no reason to spell them that weird. Like, just spell them, because the words weren't written in English letters originally, mm. which means technically you can just sound it out. There shouldn't yeah, be any problem with just spelling it how it sounds. Chinese words um, have that same problem. It's yeah. a very odd but, uh, When you spelled. spell them in English, yeah, yeah. It's like, who the heck will pronounce the Z in the middle? Like, wh- why would you, <laughs> why write it like that and stuff, yeah. But now I'm trying to picture, like, the announcer, Quetzal Khan wins or like quetzal kotal <laughs> wins it's just kind of goofy sounding so i get it you can't have like these basic names like johnny shao kitana and then 
Quetzalcoatl, like this long, like <laughs> twenty-letter long word. Like it's just not gonna work. It stands what out is the too most much. Complicated Mortal Kombat name. I'm trying to think. Can't have Fakumram. Looks goofy. Cut it Fakum, out with that. Fakumram. <laughs> Asusina or Asusazena. I still can't say her I name think correctly. Also seen it, bro. Probably Ferratov MK just because it's two words. Oh, true. They, yeah, they, it's it's, it's, yeah, it doesn't flow as well as something like a, a Shang Tsung or a Quan Chi. It's just mm. Ferrator. I I will admit, Ironically, I always forget Su Hao sometimes. Just, is it like Su Hao yeah. or is it? Yeah, sometimes Su I forget, Hao. but I know it's Su Hao. Yeah. Yeah. Chameleon might have the one of the longest names, which is funny because it's just an animal. But letter Star wise, chameleons are pretty long word. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, I think it's a good thing that we didn't pack too many topics because I knew we were going to like go on one topic for a while. Just this Tekken topic, we're already in 40 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could, we could, yeah, I, guess I didn't we, really we even could, talk about could, the event itself. I just talked about the gameplay. Go <laughs> I mean, there's no reason we can't go a bit longer for the There Christmas was Tekken show. bowling at one point, too. Santa Claus. Oh, it's back? Oh, no, my we just went gosh. to a bowling alley and we played bowling like in person because oh, ha, ha, we had like <laughs> we had see. the early recording session for like three hours after lunch. So lunch, then recording for three hours. Then if you wanted to stay or go to your hotel, you could. But if you stayed, you got to play bowling for free at like the nearby bowling alley because like tech and bowling, which was awesome. The sad That's part funny. was almost every YouTuber left. So it was just me bowling with the staff, and they were all really cool people. So That's cool. I just got That's to get cool. drunk with the staff and bowl with them. I, I won, too. I tied for first place. Oh, there was me and, like, congrats. a couple other YouTubers. And I'm not even a good bowler. <laughs> so uh, I just throw I'm, the ball really hard and hope that it explodes and gets a strike. And it usually yeah, works. Yeah, that's my tactic, too. It just feels better to throw hard, too. Um, Listen, so, if you're so going to get a gutter ball... Get the gutter ball at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. So, Snake, I, I see you're dressed up two weeks early. I mean, we're not, we're, come on, we're not, we're not going to get an episode after this that we're going to record and release for, in time for Christmas. I, I, I feel like the next episode will be closer to Christmas, though, but, you know. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Just everybody! In case. And by the way, everyone, sorry for the really long break. There's uh, several reasons why it took a bit. I was gone for a bit, and then we were waiting on a certain someone, and, and life happens, so they, they're not able to be here. But yeah. that's why we've been gone for, like, what, like two weeks now? Hopefully not three weeks. Uh, when this episode's out, it'll be three weeks. It'll be three weeks. Ah, uh, Sorry, guys. That's a long <laughs> time to go without your your weekly dose of Combat Kings. Yeah, and we got a lot of spicy... Con uh, well, we actually have to catch up with a lot of spicy content because, you know, we got the Quan Chi. We got... We were... <laughs> the last episode, we were going to talk about the Game Award nominations. Now the Game Awards has already happened, so we're going to talk about the Game Awards and stuff. Damn it, you skipped on my intro. I was going to do, like, a funny intro where I was going to be like... <clears throat> <laughs> so, I was hoping... So Sonic being funny? I don't think so. Well, he just cut off my intro. Not on purpose. Wow. Look at that. That's that's the Darth Sidious snake, as we can see here, just like that. That's his naughty saber. He has a naughty and a nice. There it is. Oh, there he yeah. goes. He's 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 Darth Vader when he dies. He turns good again. Oh my gosh. He's, he's pretty so, skilled so. with that thing too. Not gonna lie, uh, it's still still better than Ahsoka. Oh, the blue is stupid. The blue doesn't make any sense for Christmas. <laughs> I guess winter, so blue. But I'm I'm glad nobody understood my joke. Anyways, so I we're didn't gonna... hear it. I'm sorry. I went tunnel vision. I just said, uh, oh, look at that. It's better than Ahsoka, the show. <laughs> better than Ahsoka. I did hear that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so my buddy actually loves Ahsoka. So to like, in the middle of us playing I a love... heated Mortal Kombat 1 match, I was like, hey, hey, Thomas. He's like, what? Because he doesn't want <laughs> to fuck with them. And I was like, Ahsoka, uh-huh, is mid. <laughs> and he's like, no, it's not. <laughs> he was all bothered. <laughs> So, um, appreciate the performance there on your screen there, Snake. I'll be sure to be... It, the section will just be all about that here. But anyways... I know how, in like, in, in Japan, they have, like, the the baseball girls that, like, just dance in between, like, the baseball stuff, and they just, like, dance oh, yeah, for yeah. the audience. The that should sign. be Snake, but he's just twirling the lightsaber. <laughs> he's, like, the, <laughs> the, the break in between stuff. I like how Japan just loves baseball. That makes me happy. I guess so. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love baseball here too. It's a we literally have. I have a stadium right next to us that we can just go to anytime we want to to see like whatever yeah. games are being played. It's fun. Um, mm -hmm. So, are we ready? Oh, actually, no, no, wait. Before we get into like the that stuff, I am curious to see like what life updates with each of us because I'm yeah. kind, of, kind of curious to see what's been going on. We'll save dog for last because he talks so much, and I, there's other <laughs> things I am curious about that. And uh, yes, uh, what's up, Snake? How how have you been recently? 
Yeah, I got, I got some new glasses. Oh, oh. look at that. Because the, uh, the, the, the nose part on the old, on the last ones uh, broke because I had them for four years. So I, I had to get. So it was. I think last time we recorded, I was using my older prescription from like four years earlier. So and a, um, oh. so I got these new ones. Quite nice. You can look at the differences, people. Go back to the last episode to see the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Are those um, Gucci glasses? I think I see the Gucci logo. <laughs> is that is that a is that a Johnny gear? Is that unlockable for Johnny's cosmetic? <laughs> you you think Johnny Cage would get would get some gear as stylish as this? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I got that that neat little ball thing that goes inside. I put inside Shao Kahn so it glows in different that colors. Looks awesome. Oh, nice! Yeah, I just noticed that. I was like, I, it's changing colors too. Woo. There's also another uh, special new addition in the red section. If you can see it, I don't know if you can. It's kind of, it's it's quite small, so we can't completely see it. But I mean, so Nick has the same problem as me, where he should technically just move his desk. Ah! Closer. Oh! oh my oh. gosh! <laughs> It's the, f- it's the long lost Saurian. <laughs> oh my gosh, brother. The, the, fo- the, foxy, the foxy jump scare. <laughs> oh, the FNAF 2 jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what, guys? This is when you know the four snake is based. You see, he just like me showing the reptilian form face because that's that's how it should be. That's that's the mm-hmm, based way mm-hmm, of looking mm-hmm. at it. <laughs> Does his head just come off and you can put like a normal head on yeah. or what? Yes, you okay. can put normal head and you can take the the head the head part off, so it's just reptilian head. Yeah, yeah, like that, like that. I will say though, the figure is very hard to like put things on it, so I don't <laughs> necessarily always take like the hands and the head off because it's really hard to. So I just kind of like, stick them like that. Nice. You got that oh, booty. Oh, the booty. That's right. That's right. Sell- good selling Caked. point. Very worth it. <laughs> Somebody modded the Omni Man like thick pose into Mortal Kombat One, so whenever you do his parry, he does the little. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somebody made the video and he released the mod to everybody so I'm like wow it's, it's like yeah when that video came out everyone just clipped that like the, the booty pose basically it's insanely good <laughs> I also I um oh no let's let Snake keep talking he's going about his stuff uh, uh yes yeah, so, uh, it actually ties back into what Dog was talking about which is uh, I've lately been I've been trying to edit it it's just it, it's uh cause I'm working on my next big video ooh ooh, ooh. Ooh. It's just, it's just, um, it's, it's getting the uh, the drive to actually work on it is a problem. So it probably won't be out by the end of the year, I don't think. But just okay. last night, last night I was able to get a, a fair bit of the editing done, which is pretty good. Um, and about half it's been recorded, and it is finally. I've been talk, I've been, I mentioned this back in the MKX video, and people still occasionally ask about it. Yeah, it's the Tekken Seven critique. Yeah, that's why. That's why you put yourself through that misery. Yeah, because oh some people. Because I said on Twitter recently, I played through Tekken Seven story again. Oh god, that's so so shit. And people were like, why would you do that to yourself? And it's like, well, no. I Snake, didn't want to say. You didn't just you didn't just say I played through Tekken story mode. It was so shit. I think he says something along the lines of like, what is it worse than what NRS does, or it's like the worst fighting game story ever, or something. Yeah, it's the, the of all of all the cinematic story modes in fighting games, that is the worst one. Yeah, and I was like, agreed. Shit, I can't disagree with that. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like slightly. It's the I'm narrator, like, That's man. a hot. T- is it? Hmm. <laughs> like, hmm. It's, it's not just because of him, but that that, that certainly doesn't help. That like, that is not, the worst part, honestly. The narrator guy, honestly. I think I think the, he, the I think he has, I think he has more dialogue than even Heihachi. <laughs> His eyes were intense. <laughs> Who is the most model? I was, boring I was so monotone happy. voice. I was so happy. I cried. <laughs> Does he actually say that? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm and that, so excited. That, that's part of the scene where he compares a let- that letter his, son, his young son wrote him to one Kazuya wrote to Heihachi threatening to murder him. And I'm like, I can't imagine Kazuya writing a letter to Heihachi saying, I'm going to kill you. Like, it's such a weird thing <laughs> to, to establish. But like, Tekken 7 established all, all kinds of weird shit about the characters. Like, oh yeah, Kazuya's this massive mama's, mama's boy. And that's, that's the reason he wants to kill he- Heihachi more than anything. But also, oh really? Heihachi, I forgot about that. But also Heihachi's a good guy. He's a good yes. guy. Just, just ignore what he did to Jin and Jim Patchy. We're not, we're not going to talk about that. Just, just ignore to... everything from Tekken One to Six. Ignore all that. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> ignore all the joy he gets from torturing people and how he genuinely likes being bad. <laughs> like he yes. gets genuine joy. And like, ego. He doesn't just kill his relatives. If he had the 
option. He would like tie them to posts and golf at them with landmines around. Like this guy is very evil. The and, uh... that, 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 and for those who don't play Tekken, that's not just like a random exaggeration. That actually happened in one of the endings. In the arcade yeah. endings, yeah. In the um, that game is called like PlayStation All Star Battle Royale, which yeah. is a gigantic PlayStation like uh, mishmash of characters. Heihachi's ultimate is like he will tie your opponent into like a rocket and shoot you to space. Yeah, because that's what he did in his Tekken Five ending to Kazuya yeah, yeah, yeah. and Jin Pachi. So they just made that his level three super, which is yeah. just amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Excited to hear, like, watch that tech. It's a really good timing, too, because you're making that right before Tekkenet comes out. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. I, I, I don't think the video will be too. I think I reckon it's gonna be less than an hour, to be honest. Makes Cause, sense. Because there's not it's much. Not to, long. Because I, I don't have much to say about the game outside of the story. Because you know when you usually have that the intro part, and like here's the intro, and then I'll get into gameplay and uh, customization yeah. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Everything that's not story goes in the intro because there's very little to actually say because it's like, well, it's tech and gameplay. Uh, what what is it to say about it? yeah. is Tekken gameplay still so, yeah. that's still good? If, if, it's just yeah, that the single play, the single play content to use that in is dog shit. So you know, yeah, the game is really good. It's just <laughs> like, 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 you now have you're, to you're, uh, snake. The only positives you can really say about the game that I can think of off the top of my head are uh, the the gameplay is good and Lydia and Tekken oh. Eight is a Tekken Eight is a worse game for not having her. So you know. I miss well, Lydia now, already, dude. She was to, so much to, fun. To be fair, wasn't Lydia a DLC too? Yeah. So, mm, yeah. Te- well, technically speaking. But, but think about it. If the entire premise... Doesn't she actually uh, correlate to Kazuya's new motivation? She is. She's a prime minister who's a fighter. She yes. should be in the game. <laughs> well. hmm. That's right. Yeah. She, she fights for our country. Only Leroy survived. Darn no, it. not only Leroy, right? I feel like there were other... You mean Tekken of original the new characters? characters? Uh, from who? 7. Yeah, Katarina is not in it too. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, no one else from Seven because they're all shit. Because like they had a chance to do stuff <laughs> with them in the story and they just didn't. I think they even, I think they even dropped. They even dro- yeah, they dropped Master Raven and brought the original Raven back as well, didn't they? Yeah. Nope. They oh yeah, Master Raven's a new instead. character in Tekken Seven too. Uh, <clears throat> the, so Lira is the only one who survived as a new character, huh? At yeah. least in the base roster. Okay. <laughs> Oh, but now Snake, you have to update your uh, really successful video of like the fighting game clone characters, and just add Reyna at the start. How she carries on like the lineage. <laughs> oh, oh <coughs> the new generation well, thing. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you you now you can also maybe add like uh, Victor because every single video <coughs> I see of Victor is did Victor steal like um, the Final Fantasy characters move set? Did Victor yeah. steal the what's the ninja girl from Tekken One who got who was also DLC in Tekken Seven? Kunimitsu. Kunimitsu. Yeah, did, did he steal her moveset? I see, recently saw a video that says, did Victor steal Lydia's spa or something? Or Lydia's see, moveset see, too? I'm like, geez, he's stealing everybody apparently. <laughs> Kunimitsu is another good example of how weird this is. Because like, she was a new character. It's, it's a new Kunimitsu. It's the daughter of the original. Yeah, and, like, she was cool. Uh, so like, why even b- bother establishing that if you're not going to bring her back in the next game to do more with it? Nah, it, bring back the original Kunimitsu, but give her like a housewife outfit. <laughs> Like she's wearing the mask, I, 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 but she's the, also the, like the, got the, the apron, apron and, slippers and, everything. and like a ladle. Yeah. <laughs> she has the chocolate. She's ready it's to funny. beat in discipline. You know, it's very <laughs> funny to look at Tekken 8's roster and be like, that is a very big, but also a very safe roster. But at the yeah. same oh, time, yeah. where is yada yada? Where's Eddie? Where's like all these other like very popular characters too? It's just like so. It's very interesting to still say that despite it being a pretty big roster from like day one. It's kind of sad mm-hmm. to think the idea that, that Eddie Gordo's last last appearance for like a decade will be Ugh. being Lucky Chloe's bitch. Lucky Chloe's backup dancer. Yay! I'm still really <laughs> mad that Christy didn't make it in. When I saw that Eddie was not going to make the main roster, I was like, okay, they still have time to reveal Christy. Like, mm. there's got to be some capoeira fighter. Nope, the closest we get is a uh, coffee girl, who technically is still dance fighting, just yeah. in a different way. But it's not capoeira, and I miss capoeira. It's like a staple mm. of Tekken to have a capoeira fighter. Yeah. But- Eddie is cool. Yeah, Christy too. With that being said, though, I do I do like the three new characters. Though I'm excited to see what they how they play out and stuff. Also, no 2D characters survived. Like none of them. Eliza did not survive. Geese, uh, who else? Geese did not 2D? survive. Um, there's more than just those two. But uh, Akuma, of course, is not going to come back. He was That's also I mean, a 2D fighter. But my friend didn't I'm... believe me. He's like, "Why'd you drop um, Eliza?" And I was like, "Cause she's not going to make it, dude." Eliza's not going to make it to Tekken 8, so I might as well stop mastering her and just switch to a legacy character. I thought you were going to say you need to stop masturbating over 
<laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> wait a second. But did it, wait, wait. Eliza is the uh, the robot girl, right? No, that's Elisa. No. Eliza is the vampire girl. Ah, uh, yeah. When I saw Eliza, I was like, who is this? Ooh, I'm like, oh, tag. Te- like, oh, she's a very, like, was she like a secret character or something in tag team? Or, or no, like- she was she was from the uh, the PS3 like, online only game that got shut down after like a mm-hmm. year. Yeah, the game was actually two D. Yeah, I, th- I think the idea was. Uh, I think a lot of people reckon the idea was that they gave her the projectiles as a test for how like a Hadouken would work because they, they are still theoretically trying to make Tekken Cross Street Fighter. So, like, they, <laughs> yeah. they, like, they, they slightly headed that. up lean towards it I'm really excited to see how if they have like a summary of the past games how the fuck are they going to handle Akuma because like will they actually license the rights <laughs> to call him that or will they just say a mysterious warrior showed up or just pretend he are, never showed up and it's, are it's they going to actually Kazuya admit Heihachi. that Kazuya killed Akuma are they actually going to do that Can, <laughs> or is it like Akuma fight Kazuya in, in the middle of it all of a sudden he gets teleported back to Street Fighter World or something who knows <laughs> They're gonna do um, some dumb anime BS where like they both did a really powerful attack and the explosion knocked them both to opposite ends of the planet and they just lost track of each other I mean, and decided that, to go about their day. Like stuff like that does happen. Like uh, when Akuma like hits Heihachi with a with a fucking Harukin in the story mode of seven, Heihachi just get, seems to disintegrate, but he's actually just been sent flying. And it's like, oh yeah, Harukin sent him flying miles away. Like yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> The uh, I think the the only thing that people see in Tekken 8 is it, on the, in the Reno trailer on the stage, one of the statues looks really like Akuma, from what I recall. I mean, that's probably just it based looks... what, but it's just based on the thing that Akuma's design is based on. Because you see statues mm, like that all the maybe. time. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, uh, excited for the Tekken 7 video. But are, anything else you wanna you wanna mention? Uh, hmm. Not really. I've been, I've been like messing around with like my, my cool guns and stuff. Ah, uh, oh. okay. I got this bad boy. It's not real guns though, because he's no. not an American. YouTube not real, of course. Fake, fake gun, toy guns, toy. <laughs> it's it's fake for it's, kids. See, I, I, got, I had this just by chance, this knife, and I was like, you know, you know, would it be cool if, if like the, this, the slots would fit on this thing? And it's like, oh, it's made for stuff like this. Got yeah. a laser sight on it, <laughs> so I'm going full on Resi Four Leon. Very nice. Stab very nice. <laughs> I, I, awesome. I, I love bolt, bolt action rifles. They're very stylish. You can take that knife off and parry everything in the game. I can ready for yeah. <laughs> yeah, you take can the parry knife off and everything. get a one-hit kill. Oh, that, that despite everyone really wearing really like gear. The VR. The, yeah, the VR update and uh, playing that. Did you play it? Yeah, and and you do actually have to hold the knife to parry, like that. Oh, nice! I saw like that one cool. video where some guy was holding two knives and fighting crawler and just. <laughs> It yeah, just kills him in 10 seconds. Because I also uh, recently played the, uh, the VR version of the original Resi 4, so it's interesting to see the difference in how things are done. Oh, cool, so, like, cool. Like in the, for the original, you have to pick up items yourself manually, whereas in this one, this game, you can just go up to and press A, but you can grab okay. for it. So you have that option. Uh, a lot of, the Things are a lot more automated generally, I think, in this version compared to the, the other. But then, like, the knife has more options. It's not just pull out the knife and, and swing it. It's You can hold it like this... By, by holding a button, and that's how you, you do melee attacks. And like, you can you even have a, lots of comfort options, like with uh, when you're using the uh, like melee, like the third person melee attacks, you can have it play in third person or first person. And it's probably better for third person for people who get motion sickness. And then you can, uh, uh, the, the controls like that for the um, vehicles and whatnot. So, th- so there's, they do a lot of stuff to try and make it. Uh, work for you. One thing that makes it different from Village VR is that Village VR was a completely separate save and everything had to be unlocked separately. Whereas here, all your, your special weapons and that can just carry over. And all, nice. all, your, all your DLC and, and unlock, unlockable. So you can just bring over the original Resi 4 knife and use one of your golden tickets to make it indestructible. And then things are a lot easier when you got that knife on you from the start. <laughs> but it, it's... it's 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 been fun so far. I'm looking forward to getting to the part where you, you find Ashley because the normal Resi Four original VR, if you put your hand anywhere near Ashley, your hand disappears. They don't uh. want you, they don't <laughs> want you touching Ashley. It's like I just want to pat her on the head after after a strenuous moment and say it's okay. Now I can go to the merchant. <laughs> I can I can, I can softly caress his cheek as much as I like, but with Ashley, no, you're not allowed. Yeah. It's like come on, guys. Come you're, on. You're allowed to make out with the merchant, yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty Man. much. 
What game was it where uh, they had VR like that? And if you put your hand near one of the, like any of the characters, oh, oh it was the Horizon game. Yeah, like if you're trying oh. to like touch Aloy's face, she goes like. Yeah, I remember you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. She, she was like really like disturbed, like, like like fuck off, and she'll do it in the middle of cutscenes too, because you can interact during cutscenes. So she'll be talking to someone else, and if you're just casually reaching over, she's like, "We need to go to the." Go to the, the, the peak of the mountaintop and get a better vantage point. And she's like, just like being pestered by this hand. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Love have shit fun like that. with it. Don't, don't just be like cringe and lame and go, oh, no, you can't do that. Because that would be whatever weird values they're trying to push with that, that version. You know, because they removed the ballistics line. And, and Leon saying, yeah, yeah. Say, and Leon hitting on Honigan is just removed. <laughs> it's uh -huh. just, so there's no, there's no, there's no, huh women <laughs> not all of that's uh, they, gone. They, they, I also they don't appreciate like, them uh, assuming the worst that basically. we're just gonna like grope just because we have a hand thing like just don't assume the worst that's messed up of you to do that to us <laughs> yeah I just want to they just want to give head. head pats yeah I say I'm it's the like... degenerate that would slap the booty but so what <laughs> it's a game where you kill people <laughs> like, I mean, I, mean I, I have high hopes because uh, your hands don't disappear when you go near Lady D and her gigantic ass in Village VR. So hopefully, and you slapped her ass from what I yeah. recall. You made the video. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good the bit. best part of that isn't the butt slap; it's you running away and flipping I the bird. I spent my sponsor like, money just to away. slap Lady D. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> so. um... I guess I'll go next then, in terms of like updates. No one cares, Sonic. Uh, okay. Shoot him, Snake. Shoot Understood. him. All right. It's our podcast now. Oh my gosh. Oh shit! I didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah! Oh wait, you haven't loaded. Okay, <laughs> reverse time because that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Gotta remember to update. I remember Good. to put the effects inside. <laughs> now, just like Black. Quan Chi and Shang Tsung, we must now fight each other because we can't be trusted. <laughs> The way Ra Ra Raiden will come back out of nowhere. Ah! Hey, what's up, guys? Oh yeah, I, I, I want to talk. I want to talk about MK onslaught later as well. That's right. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. How about okay? I'll, I'll go through mine pretty quickly. You can talk mm -hmm. about MK onslaught because I don't have much. I just ever since last time we recorded, I've already basically just been writing my script like for the upcoming MK1 super project, the Woo! ultimate sucks video. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about what I'm doing because I'm like so many things, so many gags, so many skits, so many things planned. YouTube may or may not have something in it, but we'll see. I, I haven't written that far yet. Currently, oh. I oh. have written, I've finished the first four chapters of the story mode. The, um, and, um, in my little script book here. And, so that's Kung Lao, Johnny, uh, Raiden, and Kenshi. Yes. Now here's a bit of a fun question for you guys. Which one out of the four chapters do you think is the longest video as of right now? Like, out of the four chapters. Most people would assume it would be either one, because it's the beginning of it, and you're going to get oh. all the intro stuff, or uh, Raiden's, because that is the longest chapter yeah. in the game. I'm going to guess, since you're, since you're even bothering to ask, <laughs> that it's probably Kenshi. Hmm. What about you, Doug? <laughs> I I guess uh, I do think you'd like try to trick us like that. But <laughs> Why I'm asking I'll this do the question. opposite of Snake and just go for the obvious one and say that it's Raiden. Uh, <clears throat> so as of right now, I wrote the my script. I think my MK twenty twenty one, sorry MK twenty eleven MK nine video is like twenty pages, which is like about an hour. That video, the first chapter is like eight pages. Second Johnny chapter, only four pages. Very short chapter, not much to talk about. The Raiden chapter, also eight pages. And the Kenshi chapter, which I was thinking, I don't think too much happens in here. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> this freaking chapter is somehow longer than the, 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 the tournament. And the main reason why is, like, I, I went down a very stupid rabbit hole that I just couldn't climb back up. I'm like, I'll just start <laughs> off by just... Because it starts off by just me going through, like, Kenshi's moveset. Because I'm thinking, in story mode, Kenshi's way different than, like, like regular Kenshi in MK1. Because he's in Sento mode without Sento permanently in the story mode. Yeah. Which makes him literally one of the worst characters in the game, in a way. But I've, I, I kind of want to understand the mechanic, and I'm like, okay, so... I then went on and kept asking questions, like... So what happens to his, like, katana whenever he puts it away? Because when he's in the regular mode, he puts the katana sheath, 
no, the sheath part, yeah, the sheath away, like he has it on in a regular mode, but when he puts it away when he's in katana mode, and the sheath turns into Sento. And that, uh, the ancestor. And that animation looks really cool. So, how do they handle that in the story mode? And I go on and on and on. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, oh, fucking hey. Now I'm going on this, like, insane rabbit hole that I've, like, carved myself into. And, like, half the video is just me talking about Kenshi's katana. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it becomes like, I'm just going to warn you guys if ever you go back into story mode, whatever you do, do not look, do not physically notice. Kenshi's katana. It will ruin your life. I'm, I'm just gonna. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> Other than Fair. that, um, well, we know, I we, have know, gone we, know, we know the few chapters after that are going to be even longer because Baraka's introduces reptile. Ashra has the introduction of the reptile Ashra ship, and then reptile gets his oh. chapter. So you're, you're going to be like, "Yo, reptile, reptile in this game, reptile." And you're just going to be gushing over <laughs> reptile. But like, oh, I'm these, so excited. These are going to be the longest. Chapters. These will be the longest pages plus the last one, because the last chapter. You can play as Reptile anyway, so you like, and Reptile saves the realms, <laughs> yay! You, oh my gosh, the, I'm, you know what, thinking of that loud chapter is giving me a bit of like a worry, like, <laughs> I'm having a bit of like sweating. There is a, there is a compilation on YouTube right now that someone has played every single character hmm. in that last chapter. It's over six hours. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, am I going to have to do that now? <laughs> <laughs> just to see no. little differences. When you play as Kenshi, he never pulls out his sword in the cutscene. Isn't that funny, guys? <laughs> and stuff. I mean, if I was you, the most I would do with that part, Sonic, is just bring up how there's way too many generic responses for most of the characters. Yeah. Like, Maybe when, you when fight the them. ground shakes, for example, they go, what's happening, Liu Kang? Yeah. Like, 80% of the characters say that. Only a few of them say interesting stuff. Like, Johnny Cage goes, well, that can't be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. basically. No, I will go very thorough in that entire section. Just try to find everything oh, funny God. or like interesting to mention about the characters. Oh, God. But yeah, you're definitely right, Stick. The next three chapters are gonna be a a a, a doozy with like <laughs> poker skits gonna appear. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm also doing a section in huh. my video where I call "Let's break it down" and then I'll break down this character because like okay, after I've done the first chapter of Kung Lao, let's talk about Kung Lao and how he is in this universe, how he's in the story, maybe his character design, and I can literally make it. I can I can discuss about Kung Lao now because after chapter one, he just kind of chills. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not nothing much happens with him, so I can just talk about him right now and stuff. And I'm I'm gonna do that for like Reptile and be like, okay, now for the next thirty minutes, we're gonna be discussing everything I want to talk about with Reptile. Um. What, one last thing I'll mention is I've turned on the um, – I'm playing through the entire story mode twice now, once to watch the cutscenes. And another time is I would turn the cutscene audio to zero, and then I would turn on the descriptive audio and listen to what they say there. Ah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And there are genuinely some pretty, like, A, good information, and B, like, pretty funny, like, things the, the, the descriptive audio lady says. Like, for, for yep. example <laughs> – um, when Kung Lao fights Sub Zero in the first, first chapter, he throws his hat, right? And then afterwards, he throws like a metal weapon towards like Sub Zero. Yeah. Well, what's that metal weapon called? Uh, Chakram. You're right, actually. Yes, that is what it's called. <laughs> it is the freaking weeb. Circuit. <laughs> <laughs> he plays Dynasty oh, Wars. He because kn- that's a weapon in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Why is it there? <laughs> It's a it's an Asian weapon, so that's why they. I know they that Bo teaches them how to fight, so maybe that's why. But it's just funny how in the middle of a ramen shop, or in the middle of a restaurant, they a just have house, a weapon yeah. stuck into the pillar. But I think it could have been cool actually if like Madame Bo didn't just fight hand to hand. It's like she just pulls out from under the counter, and then she has like an, a little blade fight with, with smoke. Hmm. Well, like they wanted, all, she wanted to motivate. Yeah, it's like an orchestrated dance. Them. Yeah, and <laughs> may, I'm, I'm assuming definitely it's one of those situations where like Madame Bo held back, like she definitely could have more cool yeah. fights. In the cutscene, you only see one waitress actually pop up and fight like one of the Lin Kuei's in the background. So obviously, like, <laughs> awesome. yeah, they even they, they know how to fight. But here's the funny thing in a descriptive audio: um, when when Kamal pulls that up, the descriptive audio says that it's a circular chakra decoration, <laughs> which I find that to be the funny part. Like, oh, 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 decor, decor, oh, decoration. Yes, <laughs> yeah, decoration. Uh-huh. <laughs> and. Yeah, there's there's like a there's uh, there's a bunch more like goodies in the in there that I'm gonna edit into the video that I'm excited for. I think I think I always love it when like the descriptive audio describes like whatever like uh, expressions or like sassy moments happen. Like when like Melina is like um, in chapter three when she was like uh, belittling Lee Mei. It's like you should have better judgment. 
unless if you even know how to do that anymore. And it's like, Melina stares down in disappointment as she turns around back to the cheerleader stuff. It's like, damn, describing yep. all that. <laughs> I, I can't wait to hear. I really hope get, that what? at one point, Sonic, you bring up how the living forest gets completely destroyed and corrupted and nobody gives a shit and they never bring it up ever again. Because that's <laughs> yes. a big deal to me still. That's like where I, their ancestors reside and like nobody cares that it gets destroyed. I will. That is actually, and in fact, I'll be like, <laughs> this is how I'm gonna bring it up. So in chapter seven, we see this um, festival. We don't know what they're celebrating. We don't know why this is happening, yeah. but there is a festival, a lantern festival here. And um, just so you guys know, and like maybe like one scout runs in, um, guys the living forest is destroyed all your ancestors souls are lost or combined into this weird ermac creature guys panic <laughs> yeah ermac for president because he's technically <laughs> the entire society he's got all the wisdom i mean ermac he does have the ruler. king inside of him too technically speaking mm -hmm. I'm, that's I'm good too that's good too i'm looking forward to the descriptive audio being like a, a sexy lizard boy appears on the other side of the, of the bars <laughs> I just I just asked the original voice act uh, the person describing to say that or something. <laughs> Ashra looks at reptile in in, uh, in a horny manner. Oh, one one pretty funny thing is the, the description has their audio. I love if each time a character introduces like yes they also have their toes out yes she also has her toes out yes oh, foot of course shot has someone of walking down the cell. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. There's the one shot where Baraka like appears and it's just like close up to the toes <laughs> goes back. <laughs> The, um... I know that y'all are wondering how my friend feels about that, my foot-loving friend. <laughs> uh, one day he just got really jaded and was like, I don't even care if the DLC lady has bare feet anymore because they're so small. And I'm I like, they are hilariously small. Like, the women have teeny tiny feet. It's not, like, it's not it, it correctly is enough. It's not correct enough. <laughs> the, and they um... don't got to be huge. That's what he would want. That is the one <laughs> gripe I have with that friend. Oh. He, he just likes them feet big. <laughs> uh, I'd be okay with them just being normal size. It's the same Thanks. issue I have with the Thanks. hands being too big or too small. You know, like in MKX, they had like tiny hands and it bothered me. And now in Mortal Kombat 1, they have tiny feet and it bothers me. The, um, because before, a, when a character shows up on the screen, uh, yeah. the, the, the information we're given is like things that are happening on the screen. So the distributed audio won't immediately say who this character like is. Like, for yeah. example... When Johnny shows up in Chapter 2, he's not called Johnny. Actually, what's really funny is I go on Wikipedia, and he's called the Tomb Raider. And I'm like, okay, when? Like, how Hell do you yeah. know that and stuff? But, like, Hell Wikipedia yeah. calls him that. Whereas in the descriptive audio, it just calls him the man in the hat. The man in the hat slides down these rocks. The man in the hat brings out the notebook. The man in the hat it just calls him the man in the hat and stuff. I wish they called him uh, not Indiana Jones. <laughs> not Indiana Jones enters the tomb. Not Indiana Jones. <laughs> so in chapter there's, there's a name four, for, there's a name for the skin that's similar to Indiana Jones. We have what it's called. Like Illinois a, a Johnny or something, I think. Yeah. But he has six pellets and stuff, so it could be either one. But yeah, in in chapter four, I, I just every time when she talks about like a new character shows up, I just like kind of laugh inside, being like, I didn't notice that. There's a lot of bald characters that show up in chapter four. A dark-skinned bald man appears in a sandstorm. A bald creature is captured by military guards, brought to Shang Tsung. A bald white man appears through a portal. <laughs> just constantly says a bald person <laughs> in chapter four. He had to buy his own copy of Mortal Kombat One. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all know about that or no? <laughs> oh, the, the, the I mean, face bottle for Quan Chi. You mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know about that. That's funny. He made a big deal about having to buy the game, and I'm like, well, yeah, because you were paid. <laughs> Like they, on, no, they, you can do whatever you want with the money. You're, you're in no business to say that when you got it for free too. Come on now. I wasn't paid. <laughs> That's the difference. I don't get paid. So like my, uh, my okay. like consolation is getting the game. <laughs> I wasn't paid hundreds of bucks to like face model. <laughs> I would so, do that for free. Make me the face. <laughs> I don't even like Quan Chi, but make me the face of Quan Chi and give him gotta, my voice and mannerisms. Just ruin the character. You gotta make sure your eyes are always very big. Hmm. <laughs> An astute strategy. Get them! <laughs> oh yeah, the Get them! Kill them! Get them! <laughs> Kill, Kill them! <laughs> I would... <laughs> yeah. Um, but other than that, it's been going pretty great. I've, I've been writing a script. I, my, my goal is to finish a chapter per week. And it's like, oh, I finished chapter two in two days. I finished chapter three in three days. And chapter four, six days. What the fuck? <laughs> Work faster, Sonic. Ah. Write faster. Why can't yeah. you finish it all in one day? 
I, I, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not chat GPT. Why can't you I'm just no. slave away? <laughs> the, uh, other than that, I'm, I'm just been busy with the script writing. Not, not been doing much other than that. I, uh, play, I bought and played a teeny bit of Street Fighter 6, so I've been, I'm, I might be playing that a couple of days. It's very fun. Too. Very I'm fun. I'm excited to see, yeah, how that is. Just kind of, kind of, I turn on the game and it has like 20 notifications. Here's your Baki uh, stickers. Here's your this collaboration sticker. And here's your all this. And, oh, thanks. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's about it for me. Um, give me t 10 seconds to turn on my AC because it's getting a little bit. Um... Oh, he has the opposite problem that I have. It's chilly. My feet be cold. Oh, yeah, dog, uh, show your jacket. Doing my Zafina. Show the jacket? Oh, okay. Yeah, do, do I guess so. Just show it. Let me grab that stuff. There's, there's two things yeah. that I can show you, I'm pretty sure now. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm excited to see Zafina, too. She's a Tekken Knight. It's funny, I think Dog just said he's turning on, he has his heater on. I'm just turning on my AC because I'm, I'm sweating pretty pretty hard right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, the uh, the new se the next season of um, uh, Invasion should be starting in a couple of days alongside Quan Chi's addition to the game. Like, oh, yeah. Like, I remember the middle of this month, so that's literally like a couple of days from now. I can turn it on right now and check it out. Yeah, so, so oh, so, so uh, what 3D era retro skins do you think we're going to get? Uh, who we get and who we get? I'm getting? a big fan think. of it. It's got all these things on the side. Oh, let's see, let's see. Uh, let's see yeah, it's nice. got like Jack. It's got a web for some reason. I don't know what the web's in reference to. The spider web. And it's got the Z Zaibatsu. Zafina? Zafina, maybe? Oh, cool. It's got Zafina? dragon cool stuff here. Oh, there's here. King. And there's a yeah, Hong. King. I don't know who, who, what that means. And then Tekken 8 is just right here. That's sick. The, I love that jacket. So cool. Oh, it's flipped for you guys, unfortunately, isn't it? So it doesn't mm -hmm. even look correct. But no, it says Tekken Eight on on our on our screen. Oh, good. The back has nothing. In case you're curious, there's nothing okay. on the back, which kind of surprised me. And also, I got something early. I got, oh. I, got I got this. Whoa! I got oh, the most expensive gosh. version just for free. Just got to go home with it. Uh, Wait, his really? Wing lights they just up. gave you that? Yeah. Everything but the game. The game gets That's mailed later. We can't sick. have the game early. They don't trust us. I respect it. <laughs> um, but he plugs in, and the wing lights up. It's like oh, neon that's orange. So cool. Yeah, he's not very big. Um, like he's like here he is next to my face. So he's not very big, but he's pretty cool looking. Pretty detailed. Look at his chest. Yeah. Look at those fibers. Look at that face. <laughs> Hell yeah. So Snake just his face said, does like, look really good for how small he is. The yeah. invasion season ends in like a couple of days. I just checked; it ends in two days. But don't they have like a one-week period where like it just is like the gateway and stuff before it comes out? Got, this. Yeah. got a little notepad. Uh, been yeah. I kind of actually. <laughs> we'll see. I kind of wanted to be out as soon as possible. I want to grind the. Yeah, I the feel skids. a bit dumb because I rushed that. I thought it was going to be over sooner because um I think somebody said I had four days and I just took it took their word for it and didn't double check. <laughs> so I speed ran that last little bit. That Natara fight, if you try to do it legit, is like pretty tough actually. Oh, I yeah. just cheated with the Warhorn, but trying to do it legit is, is actually kind of difficult. Warhorn with infinite amount of usage. That's always very funny. Warhorn, and then I hid in the corner. If you walk off screen, like the meteors almost never hit you. And I just crouch blocked. Uh, I remember those meteors, yeah. Uh, actually, I like to bring up something I mentioned in the last episode as an apology to the Force Snake, because you are right, as usual. Um, he brought up the fact that, like in invasions, like we have a we have the Ying Fortress, which is a snow biome, and he was saying why not save that for the Sub Zero like invasion season because he's the snow character, and I was yeah. like, well, there is another stage that has a snow related thing t into it, and it's the, uh, the 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 portals, the gateway stage, <laughs> and then we dropped that conversation. Well, um, do you remember the Middle Mesa? Yeah, the. the that, that's the yeah that's the gateway <laughs> so uh i don't think they're gonna repurpose that so i'm pretty sure we're gonna get sub-zero with a, like a not snowy mesa so well one Snake. of the interesting that's why things he's angry it, that's why he's one, evil one of, one of the interesting <laughs> things actually is that um one of the screenshots for quan chi actually shows him in what seems to be a new arena well yeah we're gonna get into the quan chi topic do you want to I'm, I'm, that... I'm saying i wonder if that will be what sub-zero gets no, I think that Quan Chi Arena is going to be a story expansion. Sure, but uh, I, I could imagine them just including it as a Mesa, perhaps. In the Although, future, honestly, probably. But I, I feel like if 
the most likely stage for Sub Zero will be the uh, the tomb. Because that, that do you think be... it's gonna be the tomb, or do you think it's gonna be the the gold? You know, there's the the the, ch- the gold chamber. I'd, I'd say the tomb, just because that that's where like a pivotal moment for Sub Zero happens in the story. So it's like an area associated okay. with him, whereas the gold is like not that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm just excited to get that cool Sub Zero costume that we see in story mode because you know it's going to be what it is, evil like Sub-Zero. the evil Sub Zero. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's I kind of like dope. that one. Yeah, I would. Want, I want to get that. And I would mind a cool blue and white cables. color scheme for all the characters too. It's going to look yeah. dope on Katana. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited looking, I'm for that. To, I'm looking forward to blue Kui Liang. Oh, I have a question. Do you think they're going to yeah, do true, yeah. like every character has having like a more pale like blue iced up skin yeah because like in last oh, season we yeah. have like the the gray scale oh. and stuff if they all yeah, get the, the icy arms first. that'd be so sick if they all get like the frosted like hand to their middle of their bicep that'd be kind of cool it, it, i would it, like I that doubt little it. touch it, it, would be, doubt it would be very cool and that's why it's not gonna happen yeah Dang it. <laughs> you can't say that they got the blood dripping on like baraka and stuff it's, it's, so it's maybe we'll be, get that's some texture like, you know at best we're gonna expect like like very pale skin maybe slightly bluish tint uh blue eyes yeah, yeah, yeah like frosty frosty fingers and stuff oh maybe the pale maybe we'll get white eyes like solid white eyes that'd be kind of cool that's I'm too excited. much work, Mr. Dog. You know that. <laughs> I don't understand what is, what is <gasps> their agenda against complete white eyes. It's like, why, why not? <laughs> why, 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 why can't Havoc have that with his, o- like, only uh, evil Scorpion Sin- skin? O- evil Scorpion and Evil Sindel get that. No one else. Yeah. I'm just mad how long I have to wait until I get my Melina skin, man. I gotta wait a long time, I bet, for my evil uh, Star Wars-looking Melina skin I mean, that I just freaking love. <laughs> from what I heard from the leaks, I, it could be Season 5. That's what I heard. Yes. It could, so we'll see. The That's um, like a year from now. I'm yes. excited for <laughs> light blue lizard form reptile. <laughs> yeah, Give I really that. do hope that he just gets a different colored lizard form each time. I yeah. hope. Yeah, he got the gray scale with a little bit of blood on him. I'm like, yes, let's go. Give me more. Give me more reptile cu- customization. But yeah, in terms of the 3D era skin that we're gonna get this season, um, no, it's not gonna be Melina. They're gonna save that for something. Uh. Um. Katana! Yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm still kind of mad that we can't unlock. I understand why, like, coding and programming wise. I understand. But I just wish it was possible, like, a one in a million chance to get those skins early in the shrine. Uh, like, you just get, like, season five's, like, yeah. you know, villain outfit. Just, like, a one in a... Like, we're talking lottery number odds, but it's still possible. That would be awesome. But the issue see, is the they're issue not in the game is, yet, a lot of them. So Yeah, the issue with that is you can unlock everything in the shrine so that's why there's there's a lot of trash and common stuff once you unlock all of that then you're forced to get the legendary so it's like i remember when i unlocked yeah. when i got when i started having that i'm like oh hell yeah legendary skin legendary skin legendary skin legend scary skin you're done oh, oh. wow yeah that's how those yeah that's what happens i really regret not doing the money farm glitch because then i would be experiencing that too but i didn't do any <laughs> of the the farming glitches there, I, I did it legitly, but I mean, it's still like a farming method when I, when I did and don't it. Don't you still. get a ton, though, at the end of the season? So we'll get a ton of coins then. I'm pretty sure, like, at the end of the season, you get all the the coins. Because that mm. happened last time, I think. I just randomly logged in, and I had, like, 150,000 coins. Uh, so the I was silver like, oh. or the gold one? No, the gold. Oh, that's really good then, huh? And I was like, ooh. So I assume that happened at the end of the season. I'm just guessing. And it gave you, like, all the stuff that you did during the... Because I did everything sure. in season one. People like to pretend that there was nobody having fun with Invasion. I actually was the first go around because it was new. Like that so I was very, actually enjoying yes. it, but you know, it's a very controversial. Whatever I'm haters, whatever. I feel, like, I feel like season two, like the grind is a bit more. Like, I, I, I've not even got half of, of, of the stuff that's in there this time. Whereas mm-hmm. I've got, well, I, I think I'm, I think I missed like one skin last season. Whereas this season I've got like everything. Ex- I've like, got half of it. It's just like it's just it's just it's not fun to grind. I feel like it's generally better to just. You get the you go through it once, play a bit more, you know, get the the weeklies and whatnot, and then just wait yeah. until the, the season comes around again and just do when, it again there. When you mean grind, do you mean for like the shrine or for like the mesa, the map? Uh, the the the, coins, the map, the the, the, the shrine. For, okay, the coins for season. So it's harder. I feel like it's about oh, the same. Bad. It's just like you get twenty like or you can buy all the shrine. When I, you I think it's the just more, I, think, I think it's just more expensive. Is the thing? I mean, you can, you can buy it all with the uh, your dragon crystals. One thing I hate about that is so. I can't get the female one because I got all the skins in that. But the male one from last season, there was a, I was able to I would have been able to get that. It just doesn't tell me which skin I didn't get. It, you oh, know, you're talking about the shop. You're talking about the ones you didn't unlock yet. Okay. 
Yeah, cause <laughs> in, in the uh, you can get the bundle with all the skins you didn't get last season. Yeah. Which is an alright idea. It's just it doesn't tell you which ones you didn't. It does still knock it off the the price of uh, the, price. the ones you already got, but it doesn't tell you which one you didn't get. <laughs> so I don't know. Check. So if I was going to use my premium currency, I don't know what skin I'd be getting. Yeah. Unless you gotta manually yeah. check yourself, basically. By the way, Trona Dog, congratulations on predicting that. Literally, a couple episodes ago, you were like, "Oh yeah, how about we just? Can you just? I don't want to grind. Can you just let me buy it?" <laughs> I, was like, I know I'm a prophet. In fact, I just remembered that sometimes we get we get lucky and they give us those skins as an option early, like Katana's skin that she wears during story mode during the festival. Yeah, like we just got to have that. Like you could purchase it, and then same with like Jax's classic MK3 outfit just showed well, up in the store randomly. So like, yeah, well, it is possible it, well, that I'll yeah, get yeah. Melina's outfit early. Well, uh, well, yeah, well it's, it's not the, about getting it early because those aren't the uh, the actual good and evil versions. Those are just extra costumes that are in the game. So like, uh, MK3 Kung Lao is the next cameo one. We know that because we've seen it in the files. Yeah. Um, oh. Um, so, so there'll be another couple of story mode skins that this season. Which I'm for, kind of like, excited to finally unlock those. So, I mean, um, it, it, maybe it'll be one of the Shaolin outfits for, like, Kung Lao or for Raiden. Yeah. That would be a neat costume. Uh, we've still got to get, like, Melina's um, outfit as well, eventually. Uh, the Shiv one. Shiva Renatai festival outfit, yeah. yeah Dude, it's, Evil it's Kung Lao, by the way, has the best drip ever. Like, I've never oh. liked a... An alternate so much like evil kung lao looks sick dude it's, it's weird how, how kung lao went from having like the worst costume selection in mk11 to one of the best in this game like all three oh, of his costume, so? all, all three of his core costumes are really solid and then he also They're... gets that he also gets a shaolin outfit and and his starting outfit in the story like he has some that, really yeah good i want that i want i want the casual wear raiden and kung lao that one i really want chapter one i want casual costume for everybody dang it and i won't stop harping on this i want to see yeah. katana and melina adorably dressing wrong because they don't know like what looks okay in, like in our society so i want like just hilarious pairings of clothing like pajama okay. pants with yeah, like I, a really nice top or something being like it is comfy so i wear this <laughs> That's what i, I, I have a question says. about Kung Lao's Ma Ma costume Melina in like casual like pajamas and that with like slip that big fuzzy slippers and stuff would be so fun because it also speaks yeah. to her character like she's she's so overworked as the, the new empress so she's just, <laughs> so a, ch a chance to just like relax and just wear something comfortable she'll take it and then like she's supposed to have gone back to Outworlds a week ago but she's just lounging mm. around on like Johnny Cage's couch or something he's like Melina <laughs> babe you've got to go back she's like no I'm comfortable here you can't make me go I can, I can also Wait. see Rain unironically thinking that like a really nice bathrobe is like regular outside attire because it looks like fancy with like the, the collar and everything you know I can see him wearing uh, that outside and being like yes <laughs> and he just wears that when he fights like the nice bathrobe so here's I, a very I, funny. I, I want Rain and Johnny Cage in swimsuits. Yeah. Oh, the mods already did that. <laughs> I mean, we already got smoke in like the most humiliating lingerie I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Almost everybody has a has a swimsuit now with the mods. Basically, it's very impressive. Just recently, oh. we're getting Shao Kahn, uh, General Shao. <laughs> and random random thing, I won't talk much about it, but um, Asazina, Coffee Girl, in Tekken Eight, has a swimsuit alternate just readily available. It's like one of her options. Almost everybody who was playing her at the gameplay demo <laughs> was wearing that. You're all degenerates. <laughs> you all just put her in like the bikini. I mean, the uh, her... what was that Street Fighter Five character who was the, the 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 she's like basically the female version of the electric Brazil guy, but oh Laura, oh, Laura. Yeah, yeah. Every every tournament I see of Street Fighter Five because Laura is really top tier. Everybody just wears her in bikini in the tournaments and Evo and stuff. Everybody the just, bikini everybody just is actually that. her less revealing outfit. The one she had by default that is like just Lady of the Night, man. She's just wearing a shirt, but it's like <laughs> barely covering her tatas, like the the nipples right there. You can just picture it. And then she's wearing the shortest shorts you've ever seen, and that's her outfit. That's her <laughs> secondary outfit that she launched with on like day one. I was like, good god. <laughs> so um. <laughs> Oh shoot! Okay, oh, and it says went... bonita, which means beautiful. So that's funny too. Interesting. So I wanted to mention about Kung Lao's costume, which I find uh, an observation I found really interesting. So he wears a casual wear in chapter one, and then yeah. in chapter three, when he goes to the tournament, he wears his default outfit. And then in chapter four, uh, Kenshi, Johnny, and Kung Lao wear these new armor suits. Yeah. So unexplained, by the way, you should mention that. It's just, just unexplained where these came from. <laughs> they have new armor suits. So I kind of. Um, so my question is, um, does that mean like Kun Lao's Chapter Three costume, like that his default design, 
is that a casual wear or is that like more formal? Like formal. I'm not. So do you think that's a more formal design for him in yeah. a way for because, when because he it, attends it's, things? It's what he's wearing when he goes to uh, to Outworld. Tournament. Yeah, yeah, like he's dressing fancy. It's equivalent. It's the equivalent of what Johnny wears. Like Johnny doesn't actually have like casual wear technically, but it's equivalent of his like buttoned-up shirt and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just find it really funny because uh, this is kind of a spoiler for my script, but I thought I'll just mention it here. It's, it's, I just think it's funny. Uh, in the Lin Kuei section, when he's about when when they're about to go on the mission, Raiden and Kun Lao show up to Lord Liu Kang is ready to brief you on your mission. Kun Lao goes back to his default costume. I'm like. Okay. Um, okay. Interesting. Chapter thirteen, when they all have the gigantic fight with all the uh, different versions of themselves, Kun Lao wears his armor suit. <coughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah, I can see that uh, he wears the default for more casual wear or more like not fighting situations. Despite the fact that he has a different hat for both situ- both occasions, he has different hats for both like skins. But mm-hmm. okay, so that's how it works. And then in chapter 15, in the, in the Armageddon scene, you know, when he picked Johnny, he actually does have the armor suit. When he picked Kung Lao, he wears the default suit. <laughs> so I'm like, wait, did you, after chapter 13, did you change? Wait, why? <laughs> wait, okay. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of funny. Uh, am I? Yeah, I'm, I'm about done. I'm, I was, so, Snake, you wanted to mention a bit about Onslaught, the recent new update. Oh, yeah. So uh, the the re- recent update actually added um, a, a new chronicle. The, yeah, the, the chronicles are these the, the side stories. But we had M- MK1 Scorpion, MK3 Cabal, well M1K Scorpion, MK3 Cabal, and then we got him. There he is. All bl- all it's, blurred. That, that, that's my current the team. It's M1K, M1K Shang Tsung. With, and like, like, like the, the two best healers in the game, Shang Tsung and Noob Cyber. Oh, Shang is a healer too in this game. <laughs> yeah, but both Shang Tsungs are healers. This one actually, it's funny. So MK1 Shang Tsung can summon MK1 Goro. And I don't mean MK1 Goro, I mean MK1 Goro. You mean like stop motion or something? Like claymation? That, that, that design, like he summons him as one of his moves. Yeah. And it's like, so he's summoning Goro from the first timeline... But yeah. he's the Shang Tsung from the third timeline, and this Shang Tsung has no association with Goro at all, but he can just summon him for an attack. <laughs> hey, That's awesome. This, this Shang Tsung can turn old and young whenever he wants to for no friggin' reason, so... <laughs> I also this, love it, how that implies, like, I like to imagine if there was dialogue to explain it, that Shang Tsung is just channeling the ability to summon something. He doesn't even know what it is. So then he just sees Goro, and he's like, what the fuck was that? Anyway, because <laughs> Goro's not even in MK1, like, for him. Well, no, he is. He is. Never mind. He just looks different. So he's like, who the fuck was that? He was naked looking. He was wearing a little, little <laughs> banana hammock. And he was big, like, bigger than the Goro I know. <laughs> yeah, why, why is his FPS so low? Is that, what's going on here? <laughs> the, the, the story for the Shang Tsung was actually kind of uh, fun. It's that, that Shang Tsung is being targeted by Onslaught Shang Tsung to take his soul. <laughs> And so he's, he's like going to the good guys and being like, if that Shang Tsung takes my soul, he'll be unstoppable. So you have to work with me. And so Raiden's like, yeah, <laughs> Raiden's, Raiden's like, yeah, okay, I, I guess I, I'll help you out. And then they, they go and they, they fight um, the way through. Like, for some reason, Shao Kahn and Shinnok's in the main story, they have an alliance going, but they're like, here they're willing to let Shang Tsung take the lead because they're, plan- they're planning to let him gain ultimate power, then overthrow him. Ah. <laughs> and then I go, and go, and go to different timelines and conquer those and then the wild part is you beat Shang Tsung and then you have to fight Raiden and Fuji and Fuji just walks in shirtless and you just beat him up and then <laughs> okay. and then when you beat them Shang Tsung takes Onslaught Shang Tsung's soul and just fucks off back to his timeline so it's like so is Onslaught Shang Tsung dead now? Uh, huh no, he killed the zesty boy. He killed our, our favorite little lip biter. The little... No. no, 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 no. The, the lip biter killed Karihiro Yuki Shang Tsung. Yeah. Oh, he did. That, that, that's one of the weird things, actually, is the fact that when he shows up, he, he, he goes to the, the uh, Wushi Academy first, and the Shaolin are just like, "You're not Shang Tsung. You look nothing. You got you're, you're nothing like Shang Tsung. You got a different face." And I'm like, "Are they referencing the fact they have a different face model between the two games?" That'd be kind of, that, that's kind of funny. Is that a canonical a detail? Is that, is that <laughs> real? What is happening in this yeah. game? But I'm just don't I just don't understand how it's supposed to fit within the onslaught narrative, because. 
I mean, especially now the main story is just ramping up more Shang Tsung. So unless this is set after the main story and Shang Tsung just dies then, or maybe this is a separate timeline. Yeah. I mean, they already did that. Did it happen with the first ch- first um, chronicle? Where you have Scorpion's working for Shinnok, even though this is way after he should have quit working for Shinnok. It makes no <laughs> sense. Dang it, Snake! Now you're just making me angry because maybe they thought it would be offensive to like keep Kerry Tagawa's face on MK11 Shang, but since that's clearly supposed to be MK11 Shang in story mode, and the voices and mannerisms are similar enough, yeah. And we already see Dark Raiden's face, so like they used his face. They could have just taken. Carrie's face and pasted it on oh, that yeah. Shang Tsung and it would have made immediately more sense <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> also, also, the, also another thing is that um, in the tags for the character it confirms yeah. that the, the new Shang Tsung is an outworlder the other yeah, one's we, listed we, we, the, old, the, old, the old one's listed as Earthrealm this one's listed as yeah. Outworld so it specifically is confirming that I'm glad they I'm glad they got that right at least yeah it's, but here's it, the funny it's thing very though, that begs the, the question that that's an outworld Shang Tsung that begs the question, though. Do you think that he was actually born in Outworld, or do you think that Liu Kang just moved him there, like, after birth? <laughs> well, well, obviously, that, he's born well, there. Well, I don't that, I think that'd be really silly. But that, that, that raises a funny question. Is like, well, yeah, Shang Tsung is going to give him a worthless life that lasts forever because he's, he's in Outworld and not an Earth Realmer now. Uh, details, details. <laughs> <laughs> the, that'd be uh, an interesting plot point. I, that's not, I don't think, stated to be the case, but imagine if, like, time just works differently in Outworld. So theoretically, that, anyone could live for thousands is, of years. That is something John Tobias said was supposed to be the idea. Oh, like, okay. It, it was never addressed in the games. Um, that would be oh, better because I don't like the idea that, like, it, it's not a big deal, but it's always going to be kind of a thing in the back of my brain that technically Katana is, like, a cradle robber because Liu Kang is, like, innocent virgin boy who's, like, probably... 18, 19 years old, and yeah. here's this 10,000 year old woman just like, hmm, don't mind if I do. <laughs> well, to be fair, though, Lou was the one making moves on her in the NRS games, at least. <laughs> That's true. Maybe his Riz is just unstoppable. Of course it's unstoppable. You, you, you see this man. You, you see this man right here. He's got an unstoppable Riz. Of course. Uh, breaking news. I'd like to give a bit of a um, breaking news here. Everyone in the Combat Kings podcast, I'm going to need you guys to go follow a user called the Susi Sensei. I'm going to put it right here. He just messaged me <laughs> oh, yeah. saying saying that if he reaches 2,000 followers, he will draw all of us gender swapped. So yeah. he's, he just lost four followers, and he's very sad right now. So I'd like <laughs> to say that you know, guys, we show support. He's a good artist. He draws many great fan arts. Uh, Why so, 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 pl- please yeah. edit in one of the many wonderful arts he's done of me as a girl. It's uh, your profile that, picture on Twitter, right? That, that, so literally, that big, I can just use that. All the ones with the big, thick booty. Like, yes, that is that there is you go, me. There you go. Oh, oh, like oh so that's like that. okay. But I couldn't, I couldn't loot you. Okay, that's where the line is. You wouldn't let me do the looting. <laughs> it's been, it's, it's been half a year. It's been like almost a year, and you're still grudging on that. He's still, he's, he's still, it made me lose still, all motivation. Like I wanted yeah, he's, to draw. He's, he's, he's like, been like a year, uh, and I, do, so I was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll draw it." And then he does it. Uh, and that, sushi, that's and right. Sushi, my... Sushi's just like, "Fine, I'll do it myself." <laughs> yeah, my, my like, Shona Dog is so fixated on that with Snake that he never fixed my Gilmon's booby art part, and like he never he never gave me a new version of that after his first revision. So was... <laughs> oh, fair enough. No, I know like, digital now, so I could probably actually do it, but um, I remember yeah, I'm it was still like, too uh, lazy. Because Gilmon has like the hazard mark on his chest, but mine has the XD, and it's like when you oh, send me them, I'm like, oh, that's really was. cool, okay. but it is the hazard mark. Just make it an XD, and it'll be great. All right, and it's been a year. So <laughs> so, <laughs> but, hey, okay, I made that. Uh, I made your avatar look very breedable, though. I made her like human height and everything. I, I don't know if that's <laughs> the best word to use, but it, it, it looked good. It looked good. Girl looking <laughs> breedable. Okay. Why does a reptile have have ch- chest mounds? Don't worry Shut about up. it. Shut up. No, that's yeah. Do not go in that debate. No, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> just give it. Whenever someone says, "Why does a reptilian have have, have breasts?" They just make it bigger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what were Why we does that about? raptor have abs? Because it looks cool. That's like the only reason. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, they don't have abs. <laughs> onslaught. Yeah, uh, and they also actually got a new main story chapter. The first one since the game had a pro- official launch. Chapter five. Wow. J- Jade. And like the, Ooh. I've started to notice actually how the, um, the the game does some stuff actually quite like where I, I like the way that the story is actually told because most in a normal Netherrealm story a chapter is four fights long and mm-hmm. you largely just focus on 
that character and whoever you're fighting often doesn't really get much character to them and and there's not much in the way of like background plots whereas in this game there are background plots that run throughout the story like how baraka early on uh, you start in the first couple of chapters we set up his uh, discontent with khan replacing the tarkatans with the shokan as his main enforcers and then it leads to in chapter four we told we find out baraka started a rebellion against khan okay <laughs> he, 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 tarkatans have turned against him and then that comes, that's prominent in jade's chapter where jade is forming an alliance with him to save katana because the basic story of, of onslaught it's it's basically take the time frame. Uh, take the MK 11s two time periods. Take the time frame of the past with the status quo of the present. So you got Shiva as the queen. Uh, you got the the, the Cyber Lin Kuei and Sub Zero's Lin Kuei. Baraka uh, joining Katana against Shao Kahn. But it, it's in the time frame of MK two. So, so it's just kind of interesting. And also MK four Shinox is related. Yeah, Sh- uh, Shinox also also here as, as like the, the main villain. He's like you can't play as him yet. But you can fight him in in certain story oh, okay. chapters. Uh, like he's, he was the boss of the first chronicle as a M1K Scorpion, uh, which is like yeah, Kwai Lang Scorpion is already beaten up Shinnok. <laughs> he's already like super powerful. What um, do you yeah. think? It's like how how does how does the chronicles tie into the story, or are they just like that's the thing? It, it, it's hard to canon? tell because I was hoping that because you. It, one of the st- any given chapter you'll bounce around between like all five different enemy factions and fight them all but the black dragon don't show up in jade's chapter and i was hoping they would because there was a big status quo change for them in the cabal chapter where cabal and erin black work with the special forces to take down kano and then uh, they turn on each other because erin's like well i'm working with frost with my part of the black dragon and then cabal then cabal has to just run off on and be like a, a loner now but because the Black Dragon don't show up, it's hard to tell what the status quo is. I mean, the, the Chronicles never mention the main story, so it's hard to tell if it is part of the same timeline or a separate one. We don't know. And again, like I said, like Scorpion was working for Shinnok in the first one, even though he should have left Shinnok's service long before the Cyber Link Way was established. Yeah, I remember I saw your video about it, and I'm like, look, we're not even sure what version, when, when the Scorp- Quileen Scorpion even is in this plot line because it's like so does this take place at the end of mk1 but he doesn't have his scar so maybe it's supposed to take place like before then it's like what what the heck is yeah <laughs> I, 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 that's, that's the thing i want to do in a line through time that that goes into onslaught and um, and one but i need to wait until i i understand how the chronicles work because it's really hard to tell maybe yeah you gotta wait till onslaught is finished because it's still going and stuff I, i'm not gonna wait until it's completely finished because it's like if it, if it continues at its current rate, that's like two months each uh, for each new main chapter. <laughs> and we're only five in. Um, and, uh, <laughs> we're, we're not got that far in the story, but um, the, the new cutscene, there's, there's a new cutscene with Jade in it. Uh, so I was surprised there wasn't like, more fanfare over that. Like the, the Edenian stands like oh, screen because Does she you... fight or anything? Or does she no. talk? Uh, c- c- well, we had that, la- had that uh, in chapter three with where Katana. she fights Katana. Yeah. And then <laughs> Jack's got a, a nice big fight against all the Black Dragon where he fucking beats up Cabal. Uh, Jade, it's, <laughs> for, for Jade, it's because the part of the plot is that Katana and Coastal have been handed off by Khan to Frost for like mind control experiments. And so, uh-huh. but then, then the, but oh. then like the, so the souls and bodies get separated. So then you have to fight the corru- the corrupted bodies and souls under Quan Chi's control in order to drag them back to Earth Realm and rest- and put them back together. And the cutscene is just Raiden doing that, and it's so funny because, <laughs> for one, when you see them being controlled in the Nether Realm, it's the same basic models, just like recolored, like a, a texture effect on it. But here, but in the cutscene they use different models. So they have like a normal coastal like unpainted model that's that they use for it. Oh, and, and it leads to this really funny bit where when Kotal's body and uh, soul are, are recombined, he has it's like take the default body with like the alternate costume head without the face paint on. They just swap the heads. Oh, it looks so weird. I'm I'm fine. I just found it. I just found the clip. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fucking Curse. hideous. <laughs> oh <laughs> gosh, I'll, I'll send it. I'll send it here in just a second. It is it is weird. <laughs> And, and it's like I'm yeah, just like, sad Scorp- this like jade scene is not a jade shower scene. It got me all excited. <laughs> oh, it's well. so weird. It's like 
And it's like Sonya's there and Johnny hasn't been seen since chapter two, but he's just here. Scorpion actually shows up and you team up with him to go to the Nether Realm for a bit. You team up with Sub Zero to fight Frost. And that's another example actually is the fact that chapter one, Sub Zero kicks Frost out. Then in chapter four, we find out she started the Cyberlink way. Chapter five, Sub Zero finds out about that, and so he actually encounters her. But Sub Zero's not had a chapter yet, so I'm thinking, are they doing the thing MK11 completely failed to do, and they're going to have it that Frost's final defeat will be in Sub Zero's chapter? Is Sub Zero <gasps> going to get to do something in this story? <laughs> like that'd be so cool. <laughs> that would be cool. I really yeah. um, like watching this cutscene because it's the exact same like cinematography and mood of MK11. It kind of feels nostalgic to see this yeah, like, in a way. work again. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it, it, it's, and stuff. it's really cool. And it's like, yeah, here's because it's not just a random cutscene. It's used in MK11 assets and locations. Like this is the med bay where the past past Johnny Jackson Sonya show up. Yeah, so they're getting more yeah. use out of those assets that got very little play in the original. And and like aside from Raiden's new voice. <laughs> Because it is the same face, so it's a bit weird. But aside from that, like it is, it it has the feel of MK11, just without the dog shit writing. Unfortunately, what... unfortunately, true dog, you're not gonna be able to use this in your background because no one's fighting, so you, you're not gonna be able to use this background <laughs> footage. Sorry about that. I still could. <laughs> hey, what? listen, I did what I had to do in a time when there was no content. You, 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 How dare you, you downplay the, uh, my survival ability <laughs> you, you can use <laughs> to, the to still from, post from, like daily content when there was no content. You can use the uh, fight scenes from the last two chapters though, because they, they are fight full animated cutscenes. He did. Of, like, yeah, so right? you, can, you can use I'm pretty that. Sure you That's did. fine. The um, Jade Katana fight and stuff. It's just it's just weird when you look at it because like I've said it before that clearly there was a budget cut because the first the first yeah. chapter had like five six cutscenes. Everyone since has had one, and it's like. It's, I don't know why you would pick Jade Jade fights Katana as as the scene you're going to put the budget into, as opposed to Katana finds out that Sindel has been resurrected under mind control. Like that's the scene you you, you do. That's the one with all the emotion. You get Kari Walgood in to do, give a performance, and then and then Sin, and then it gives a chance for um, Mara Juno to come in and like play the mind controlled Sindel instead of the evil Sindel. So it gives you all these opportunities that we didn't get in MK11, and it makes a neat parallel with the uh, the scene from Aftermath, where it's a happy reunion. It's like, oh no, well, this is a terrible thing that's happened. Well, well, technically speaking, in MK11, Revenant Sindel is mind control Sindel, so she did play a mind control Sindel. Mm. Oh, hush up! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad that Snake is like genuinely having fun with a Mortal Kombat game. It's been a in while. In a weird way, <laughs> I was not expecting that with the mobile game because you really loved tweeting and talking about all these things that are happening in this game that pretty sure 90% of the MK community just can't be bothered, at least for right yeah. now, at least. So it is it is fun to listen to, like, yeah, your, your, how you're treating and how it's going on and stuff. I, th I think it actually has, like, better, mon like better less egregious monetization than, than M1K. Does games. it? It's really sad. Does it? Really? I mean, I mean, I mean one of the things, like, I, I know mm. it costs 800, like, blue skull, skull orbs to get the, uh, the pity draw for one of the uh, event characters, but okay. you can still get, you have a chance to get them anyway. So I did like 20 draws, like two batches of 10, and got Shang Tsung. So I can just, save, you... I can just keep keep saving the crystals for the next event character. Oh, have did they finally add the option to do yet? 10 at a time? They finally added that? Wait, I, I was asked or two not. questions at once. Sorry, What's sorry, happening? you go first, dog. <laughs> <laughs> so did they finally add the option to do like 10 purchases at once, like a bundle? Because in the beta version they, they didn't have that like if you wanted to do the unlock like the you know little lottery machine yeah, or whatever yeah. you had to do it one at a time yeah you, you, is there an uh, option to finally do bulk since, or no since launch yeah they've had like the option to do okay. 10 at once thank goodness that was a big complaint people had was like dear lord <laughs> it takes forever <laughs> like just one at a time now what I, what I was asking was have you spent any real life money mm. on this game yet? yeah i did i did in the first event because i was like uh, I wanted to get uh, M1K Scorpion, and his image is in the background of one of the bundles, which inherently implied that you would get him with it, but you don't. It's just like some random currency. Oh. So I spent like five quid and didn't get what what it seemed like it was promising, which fucking blows ass. <laughs> kind of messed up. Yeah, that is actually genuinely. Uh, you messed got tricked up. in onslaught, and you got tricked in M1K's uh, Sindel shop when, yeah. when she was there too. <laughs> This brings up a good point that I wanted to mention. So it's not just Mortal Kombat and it's not just Street Fighter 6. It turns out that like all these big game companies are just suddenly getting really bold with these ridiculous prices for things. What's because Fortnite apparently do? has like 
car skins now that cost like 40 bucks for like, like Fortnite? a decal on your car. Yeah. So, yeah, so Fortnite like, has huge freaking it's not a decal, it's a new car, but it, no one's going to freaking yeah, buy it. It's like okay, let me yeah. let me explain let me explain something here. A skin in Fortnite is like um if it comes with other things, it's like, "Hey, yes. there she is." Woo. Yes, my queen. So, a skin <laughs> in Fortnite is like a thousand five hundred V bucks, but that's like if it's a good skin. It comes with a back bling and stuff. If it's just a regular skin, eight hundred V bucks. And if you get in a bundle with other things or more skins, it can get cheaper. One damn car is four thousand V bucks. Who the hell is gonna spend that money just to play the dumb racing mode? Kids. That's like, I'm uh, guessing a hundred V bucks is like one dollar or something. Uh, so four thousand is forty. How do I translate this? Let me think of this. Okay, one thousand five hundred V bucks is no is it oh my head i'm trying to think if it's about like the about a ten dollar mortal Kombat skin 1500 okay. v bucks skin but yeah about <laughs> that much so it's about like that's probably what it is bucks then. maybe for like i the, wonder if these big companies just looked at what fortnite was doing because it's like the best to ever do it like i hate i never played fortnite not a fan of fortnite i don't hate it either i'm not its enemy but i've never played fortnite and i'm just flabbergasted at how well they're succeeding like, oh, they have yeah. every popular franchise, like, every famous fictional character is, like, in the game at this point, with the exception of Mortal Kombat, because some dumb double <laughs> standard there. We'll see. Um, we'll see. Yeah, this is only a matter of time. They can't keep, like, not oh, doing nice. it. Um, they probably would have done Killer Instinct by now if it was relevant, but it's just not relevant. So they're probably not going to add Killer Instinct. Um, that would get Maximilian dude to play it. Um, no, just, you got to put Terry in. That'll be, that'll get Maximilian player. He almost did for Street Fighter and Ripley, but he just couldn't when Ripley was doing the gritty. The Street that's, Fighter that's, one that's, was my favorite just because of how weird Guile looked. Like, I just <laughs> love how weird, like, Guile looks like he's just tired and exhausted. It, it, it cracks me up. Uh, everyone else looks pretty one-to-one. -one. And then we have, that's cool too. And then we have Chun-Li single-handedly being hey. the sexual awakening of an entire generation in Fortnite. Like, you know she made a lot of boys hit puberty early. And girls? By, by the way, <laughs> so their next collaboration is going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And they have kind of the oh, 80 designs, again. but at the same not time, again. like, what do you call it? Kind of like their own original designs, and they look very good. But that's not the point. The point is they're also bringing April in. And here's her design. Uh-oh. Oh, it's not bad. People like it. People were saying, like, yo, what the hell? It looks kind of good. To <laughs> yo, Tomboy GF April? Are you fucking serious, bro? She's always been a Tomboy. But yeah, it's an interesting mix has of, like, though? several Aprils. Because yeah. she has the uh, the onesie, but she has it tied around her waist. So that reminds us... That kind of is reminiscent of the 3D series where she's younger and has a haircut more like this. Oh, and she has, like, a, just a yeah, t-shirt. Yeah. So that good blend of both there. I'm just it's glad they didn't go 80s. with, like, one of the redesigns. Like, she's not the, the fat, tubby one from the... <laughs> The Seth Rogen the movie, most at one. least. Yeah. yeah. I love how this, like, the, the second game character I can think of who has weaponized a boom mic, because, like, Johnny Cage did it, did it in a brutality. Ah. And now she's got it as, as her melee weapon. That's her melee, I, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel so dumb because I've never seen a boom mic with the, the fuzz around it like that. So <laughs> I legitimately <laughs> thought so that was a mop. Uh. <laughs> that she just tied up. Because, like, you know, the mops can be, like, wrapped like that yeah. like to, to, for storage. I thought she was fighting with a mop, and I'm like, that's a bit weird. <laughs> the camera is great, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like this design. And you. Br this actually brings me um, to a certain topic I wanted to mention. Back when Marvel kept doing terrible redesigns for the comic characters, and then Fortnite would add the characters and just do them such justice, because it was pretty much the same, but with a Fortnite twist on it, and it yeah. looked good. And I was like, why can't everyone <laughs> else do this? For Who does Fortnite have that we need to steal? For yeah. other games, like Some who of, do they have? Because they did a better job, for example, adapting DC characters than Netherrealm did, and they've had like three games to get it right. Like, <laughs> and like the, like, the, uh, the, the, the father Fortnite and uh, Ultimate Alliance Three both gave so cool. Psylocke a ponytail, and as far as I know, the comics didn't. Is a fucking crime. Why does Psy yeah. Why would you not give Psylocke a ponytail oh, Psylocke, after it's clear okay. how it looks so good? It looks so yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I, I do actually sometimes like looking at good designs from Fortnite. Oh yeah, she looks good in Fortnite, Psylocke. I'm looking at it here. <laughs> I was talking with um, Chuck Jones in one of my videos. He's a... Not Chuck Jones, up, sorry. Actually. Chuck Dixon. My bad. Chuck Dixon, Jones is yeah. a, an animator. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> Chuck Dixon, very famous comic <laughs> author. Um, I was talking with him and he brought up his Nightwing run where like at that time in the 90s, everyone had edgy like mullets or long hair. 
and Nightwing had a ponytail. Yep. And he's like, one of the first things I did as the writer of his comic was have it get chopped off during a fight. Because <laughs> he didn't like the ponytail. And I'm like, that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> I, I want to uh, bring up, because, like, what's, what's been happening with you, Trona Dog? Because I, I, I must say, I think your YouTube channel recently has been very um, interesting. I, I like a lot of the new content that you've been making. And I watched the interview of you with uh, Chuck Dixon. Is very nice. Mm -hmm. I will admit, I was expecting more of you guys talking about your top tier comic, but it was, here's my yeah. comic, yeah. So the comic issue industry. was, um, <laughs> he kind of dropped the ball and somehow either didn't read my email correctly or just forgot because he's so busy. He thought I was interviewing him, and it was supposed oh. to be him interviewing me, and so. I had to make a snap call and I was like, I guess we'll just chat then and just ask each other questions like a regular conversation. And yeah. in fact, it took us like 30 minutes before we even talked about my comic. So when editing it, I just chopped it and moved it around to where we start off with the comic because I know ah, that's what everyone is there to talk I about. Yeah, uh, I kind of hope that I can get a comic artist next because I want to pick his brain on how my, cost, my character designs look and if he likes them or not. And how they could be improved or, or like how he feels. Because I think, I think our artist did a really good job nailing some of them. And I know you don't want to spend too much time talking about my comic. But um, <laughs> no I think the character I'm the most proud of, how she turned out. Because she started off looking okay and then getting lost in some weird area. Kind of like going through puberty. Like that awkward puberty stage. And then just the right colors made her like one of my favorite designs. And it's Thunder, the buff grappler chick. Of course. In, in black and white, she did not look good. Like, I, I thought, oh, this character kind of sucks. And it's a shame because I had her idea from the beginning. And then I just had the snap decision to give her New Mexico-style colors. And I'm like, bam, this character suddenly kicks ass, dude. Like, just that tiny change. And the cool thing is I did several different palettes. And New Mexico just is so good with their colors that, like, any of them would look good. Like, she has a neon green and purple one with yellow. She has a blue and like teal one with pink and that looks good too but i stuck with the red and orange because that like just looks the best i think but new mexico like was the perfect thing to tie it all together and then she has like native american themes too with like her hair and stuff so it all just came together i was so happy with that <laughs> that's great <laughs> never give up on designing a character is the moral there like if it looks bad never just keep working up. on it yeah the hmm. um other than that like i i really enjoyed your <laughs> sub-zero video intro I feel like you, you, you saved that and planned that for like months being like, okay, here's my rant. Here's my two minute rant about this Sub-Zero situation. You would think, <laughs> so but I just had it like, I just had it one day in advance and that's it. And then when I recorded it, it was too short. So I just added a middle section and, and threw that in. And that middle section is when the little doorbell sound shows up and like explains all the complaints are like invalid because <laughs> you can yeah, actually yeah, fix yeah. all these problems. Um, yeah, I like that video. I wish it did better because I thought people would be super excited. They've all been requesting Inside the Mind to come back. Ah, and then I brought it back and it's doing okay. It's not doing very well, but it's not doing bad. It's just doing okay. But I thought yeah, it would like blow up because that used to be one of my biggest series. And it's hard to make. Those videos take a bit. Uh, yeah, I like the Dyson Robot part when he just gets shoved over by the big stick. And it's Netherrealm just shoving him at the start. I thought that oh, was yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, oh, Boston uh, Dynamics, my bad. I think I called it the, Dyson. Yeah, yeah, the Boston Dynamic robot doggy. I right? <laughs> love that. <laughs> the, I um, thought about including the part two where they slide the box away from the robot, and it's just slowly chasing it, and it's like Netherrealm just keeping the buffs at bay, and Sub-Zero's just walking after it, <laughs> and like never gets to have his buffs. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm sure looking at your channel, unfortunately, it seems like everyone's like everyone's attention is on the, uh, the controversial video that you made recently. But but you the we'll talk about that later. But the funny thing is, the, I really the thing I really liked about or the thing I brought my attention about the video is, I didn't know there was an invasion survey. There is a survey yeah. that talks about like what you would like change in the next season of invasions. And after you brought that up, I'm like, oh shit, I'm gonna I'm gonna like do a 10 minute like survey to that too. And I would yeah. actually recommend everybody here who wants like good change for invasions to do a little bit of a survey and see what you want to change and stuff. I originally I wasn't even gonna take it in the video, but like. I like my videos to be like at least eight to 10 minutes and it didn't quite make it. So I'm like, okay, time to add footage of me doing the survey and just splice that in. <laughs> um, and yeah. I cut out a lot because there's parts where I type and I narrate as I'm typing, like had a tough time finding keys. Uh, like, you know, um, some of the, uh, the parts where you get the item to fight the boss is in a very obscure spot and it just feels like it's intentionally done to confuse you and waste oh, yeah. your time. That's why um, I recommend And then also, the, like, you the get map. chests at the very first level, 
but there's no way to get keys in the very first level. And I'm like, that kind of sucks. You can't. Um, you can buy all the ornate keys from the collector. Yeah, but not in the first Mesa, I don't think. He doesn't sell keys in the first one. He just sells talismans. Oh, uh, I think you have to like walk down like the second collector shop, maybe. Yeah, yeah I think so. There's, I think a, there's two? Have, did, yeah, there's, Every there's, Mesa has two collectors and two bobs. Or three. And, and, they'll, oh. and they'll have like... Uh, the they sell different things. Different stock yeah, they sell different things. Go. I'm just stupid. <laughs> but... <laughs> There was well, a lot of chests, option, and I never had well, enough keys the, for all the chests. Well, if you want the keys, what you do is you just go to Mesa Select, go to the Wushi Academy, the one that will always yeah. sell keys. Oh, okay. I'll keep that in mind next time. That, that's, that's actually one of the e uh, quite easiest to do a lot of the time is, oh, I need to get something from the collector. I don't want to lose does? my place in this Mesa. I'm just going to go to a different Mesa yeah. and go to a shop there and then come back so I don't lose my place and I have to work my way hmm. back. Especially, yeah, back in season, especially in Season 1 when it's like, if I have to work my way back, I'm going to get ambushed. But yeah, good point. That's a very yeah. good point. The um, what, what was it? I was doing the survey. I think it's it's good. You can you can write what you want want to tell them. You can be like exactly what changes you like, you didn't like. One part I wasn't a big fan of was like it asked like, did you finish the Mesa or or did you? It said, did you stop playing Invasions mode? And I'm like, yeah. And then they say, why is it? Did you think it sucks? Did you think it's like? What, did you not like this walking part? Did you not like all this? Shit? I'm like, cause I beat it. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, I want to check the things that you talk as like negatives because I think they are negatives, but I beat it. That's why I not I stopped playing. <laughs> yeah. uh, later unlike on, I did write the Scorpion my one, but still. Unlike with like, Season 1, I haven't even gone back and unlocked the Blood Walls or anything that you can do after you defeat Natara because like, I don't care. You don't care about Bumblebee, Natara, like, color palettes? Really? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's another question. If you refight... Natara, do you get a new palette each time you beat her? No, you, no, you have to go to the walls. That's behind you have to go to the yeah, the, that's what the walls are for. Oh, well, that's easier, I guess. Um, you have two days. So, so, so the funniest next, one too. Also, so ne next season, dog, you have to do it because that's where you get the sub zero colors. True. For that, that color. Um, <laughs> the funny to, thing too you have to is do that. It this time. <laughs> uh, oh, please don't leave me thought. Oh yeah, at one point during the survey, they asked you like, which of these fighting games do you play? And I was oh, like, I why that, does yeah. this matter? Like, this should yeah. be irrelevant. And then it asked you, like, which Mortal Kombat games have you played for more than 10 hours? And I was just honest. I was like, damn, kind of exposed here. I don't think I've played the original very first Mortal Kombat for more than 10 hours because I only played it in the arcades. And, like, I would not I would play until, like, I lost a couple of quarters and then I'd, like, give up because, like, I'm a kid and uh -huh. I don't want to just keep wasting my quarters. I go to a different machine. And the, you know? and the original MK1 is, is not a very good game. <laughs> yeah. It's really not. Um, there's not much depth to it. Like, Street Fighter 2 definitely has way more depth, and that game is still pretty basic. Um, there's, like, like the throw is weird. There's no dash um, and, and all that, but there's still, like, stuff to explore. I feel like Mortal Kombat 1 doesn't have very much. <laughs> the, um... My, my answer was only MK2 MK9 was and took DC off. versus... MK versus DC, because I made videos for that, so I had to have played over 10 hours for both of those games. <laughs> I've act, Admittedly, I've never played MK versus DC. I've seen gameplay, and my first thought, even when MK9 was already out, I saw people at the college playing it on a TV when I walked by, and my first thought was, that game looks fun. Like, it, it really does look, like, silly like fun. Like, I, I think you knock like someone over a balcony and you're, you're punching as you're falling from the balcony. Like, oh, that's... Yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. looks, like, fun. Like, it looks, like, goofy, silly fun. And what's wrong with that? I think the problem is now we're in an era where everything has to be competitively viable, which, on the one hand, is fine, but also, like, well, a lot of the fun is gone as a result. The thing about MK versus DC is that's a very different topic. If MK versus DC came out today, holy crap, that would be such a weird and different thing but back then it was very clear why people hated it there was a very clear people reason. did play it competitively though make no mistake they people did. like took that game seriously and they would like main their character and the funniest one i think was green lantern because the reason he's overpowered is the most obvious game game breaking nonsense which is i think if you combo break against green lantern he recovers in time to still grab you oh so like you legit <laughs> just can't combo break a green lantern which is hilarious. <laughs> and then another character, which has been around since the Armageddon days, some characters, if you combo break with them, you get a free opener too. Like, because you get a ground pound, and the ground pound hits OTG, like laying down opponents. So you combo break the opponent. They're knocked on their ass. And to give you time to, like, start the offense, Netherrealm has them slide, or Midway has them slide Midway. on the ground. But <laughs> with the unblockable, you can hit them during that slide. So you get a free hit off a combo breaker, which is like crazy strong. And some characters get a full combo off that. 
So like, funny. if you combo break with with your character, also full combo. Like, it's nonsense. But I like goofy, dumb stuff like that. Yeah, I think it makes games fun. Um, now, I of course, have... I would hate it if it was competitive, obviously. But like, <laughs> I, I like goofy stuff in my yeah. games. I just do. So just uh, if you want to see, by the way, here are the skins. That, here are the color palettes you can unlock. I shared my. I'm sharing my screen here. Yeah, you, thank you. Can, uh, so you I can't the, see shit though. You oh, can't? there it is. Yeah, yeah, no, I can. Okay, so that's the first you one. Get the white Natara here. You get the black Natara. Pretty cool. Too bad. Here we have the yellowish black. I mean, you, you, could, you could just go in NK Warehouse and look them up. Yeah, but this is the in-game model. I think I think you might appreciate my seeing this a bit more. And then you have this one. <laughs> that last one's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I will yeah. say the first one's like, the best, so I probably still yeah, won't literally. Grind. <laughs> yeah, I think the black one here is not bad too. This one, just kind of like a def like a invert color. Um, I have mecha wings on her. I think that looks kind of cool like that. Anyways, just kind of show you that you have two days to do that. Good luck. <laughs> I now have oh, hope that because Netherrealm is finally not afraid to have cleavage, I have hope that in the next Mortal Kombat game, we're finally going to get amazing butts also. Like, we're finally going to bring back, like, leotard and swimsuit bottoms. Uh, you can only get one dog. It's either the butts or the boobs. Sorry, don't make the rules. I, I, I disagree. I hold out hope because a lot of the big companies are failing right now, and I think people are taking notice and being like, okay, this this idea did not work. Time to go back to what worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, the, the, the problem is that, that that requires them to be able to identify what it was they did wrong. And the reason they're in this mess in the first place is because they couldn't identify that what they were doing was wrong, so... Okay, real quick, I have to make this joke, and I won't spend much time on it because I don't like being political, but I just laughed so hard at this <laughs> okay. image. So, oh God. there's that term of things being remade for the modern audience. And yeah. the running yeah. joke is that the modern audience is not actually the modern audience. It's some, like, fictitious group that, like, doesn't actually exist because most people today like what they liked 10 years ago it's it's the same stuff right mm -hmm. but the joke was basically it's got the um it's got like the the criminal investigator and like the crazy person in the room like with him and the person just goes so is the modern audience in the room with us right now <laughs> oh. so it's like asking the crazy person if the voices are there and it's like is the modern audience in here with us that's kind of like funny. that's such a that's that's perfect it's this imaginary thing that like does not exist so uh I think the very funny thing is, um, I think since we're wow. two hours in, we should probably take a small break, and then we're going to talk oh. about the main topic of this freaking episode <laughs> that we haven't got into. <laughs> oh, Quanch. Yeah, we forgot about Quanch. It's okay. He's the least the popular character. Like, he's not getting any views for anybody, so. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not about, I don't care about Quanch. I want to talk about Chameleon. Hello? Of course I want to talk Chameleon about Chameleon unironically got more views than Quan Chi on my channel. So you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, let's take a small break. But, I mean, because cause the audience is tired of seeing Quan Chi all the time, whereas Chameleon literally hasn't been seen since New 2006. Character, very cool. Like, wow. The bob cut. Yeah. Well, heck yeah. <laughs> we'll Everyone talk about it more to... when you come back. But I, I've been running through my head. Like, on the one hand, it's like you have to include Quan Chi. But on the other hand, it's like, I don't think I would have because I know that he's just not that popular and you probably could have used anybody else for DLC or even story and people yeah, would have been happier well, in the well, story, really. Well, the thing is, cause like, like Quan Chi, it's, it's still weird that the, the select screen is so uneven. Like, it's just the, the 25, not 26. Like, Quan Chi really should have just been in, in the base roster. He really should. Uh, yeah, it really should have been him. Uh, him or Ermac. And I think Gears should have been DLC. Like he's not playable. Oh, story playable. Yes. Yeah. He literally should have been Gears been DLC. I think the reason is he's because not... Gears DLC mm. won't sell, but Quan Chi or Ermac will sell. So maybe that's why. Quan Chi will sell. Yeah, just not as good yeah. as like other characters, but Quan Chi will sell. Maybe mm. um, one of the other reasons is because like um, it's just a theory, but maybe Quan Chi was added later on into the story mode. They didn't plan like he maybe he wasn't gonna be there, and they're like, "Oh, okay, we can fit in Quan Chi and Ermac here, but we can't fit him as a game could, character." Could so be. that's that's then put him as DLC, because the the plot of like Act Two in the story mode is capture Shang Tsung, bring him back so we can question him. Okay, they capture yeah. Quan Chi instead. So I, I actually kind of think maybe you can kind of like make Shang Tsung the exact same thing that Quan Chi was doing, and so, so doesn't it change is too much. So you're wondering if, if Quan Chi's role is basically half of what Shang Tsung did because they realized Shang Tsung was doing too much. 
<laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> well, also, they don't even so, succeed so in they, capturing So they, Quan Chi, so they right? went back so... to the old well. They went back to the old well of, let, let's just give Shang Tsung's role to Quan Chi. <laughs> Also, yeah, like you joked about, it. And this is true for half the characters, but Quan Chi could just be deleted from the last half of the game, and like it wouldn't matter because he doesn't really Quan do anything Chi except when the evil one shows up. Standing next to Shang Tsung, yeah. being his hype man. Yeah, it, it, that's all he does. It's funny. He's, he's just there <laughs> to have a reference to the Deadly Alliance. That's literally his mm -hmm. entire role, uh, uh, both, yeah, uh, both yes. as an ally and as an enemy. Both mm -hmm. versions of Quan Chi are there for that, just to be like, remember the Deadly Alliance? I, hey, Shang Tsung's like, yeah, I, I wish our alliance had been deadly, and Quan Chi's like, ha, 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 yes, just what a knee slap of Shang Tsung, what an original joke, we've never made that <laughs> joke before. Before we go for break, I just realized something too. My first yeah. thought was, man, kind of a shame how the Deadly Alliance didn't get to kill anybody important, like in story mode, just to drive home that that's like what they do, is kill off main characters and main villains, but then I remembered that we're getting a story part too, so... Maybe they'll get to actually kill somebody important. Well, I, um, here's we'll the see. thing, though. I know Neneris is. I don't want to know if this is smart or kind of more safe what they're doing. They're really being careful who they kill off now, because and whenever a character gets killed off, man, isn't it dumb that Hanzo got killed off? Like, what the fuck, guys? Like, how dare they kill off our favorite? Like, what the hell is going on? It's like, I, I feel like they're. That's why the only character who died in the story mode that's in the main universe was Sindo. Because yeah. and, and technically she's not even dead, so it's like I think they're yeah. playing it very safe, is what I'm no, saying that's, here. That's the funny thing is, like, you think they would be like, well, we have a multiverse now, we can just kill off whoever and then just bring in an alternate timeline counterpart to replace them, like we did with Green, uh, Green Arrow. We could just yeah. kill off B Han and then another B Han shows up and goes, hey guys, I'm B Han, I'm here to uh, <laughs> do whatever bullshit Netherrealm Science is going to do this time. Maybe yeah, they'll talk like Doctor mean, Claw this time. Who knows? Multiverse I know it's like really hindsight's 2020, but <laughs> hindsight's 2020. But they also could have just made a good necromancer, like per a person with those powers oh, who's a good, good guy. guy. Necromancer. And then now you can bring back anyone who dies if you want to, if the fans like requested enough. Anyone who dies can be brought back, and it wouldn't be seen speaking, as even a weird that's thing. MKX, where it's like you know the bad guys got returned back. I mean, the good guys who returned evil were revived back into good guys, like, because... Yeah. Ra yeah. Ra Raiden, Raiden basically... I mean, we saw, we see, you see that in the Onslaught clip. He is reuniting body uh, body and soul. He is doing necromancy. That is the straight <laughs> of what he's doing. There so, you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, I like that, imagine? though. I like that Raiden Could... is, like, a spellcaster and not just lightning guy, because it, it, they... it makes sense, because he's, like, so old that he should know stuff like that. That could be a direction to take Shujinko. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's right. They, they, they already do Arcade compare him to Shang Tsung. Shujinko. They compare him to Shang Tsung a lot, like in um, MKX, especially. Like he's very much like Shang Tsung. And then it's like, what if he, what if he's just the good necromancer, and then he fights the Deadly Alliance? I don't know though. I, I want masses. a new character. I like the idea of a new original character being a good guy. Necromancer. Uh, okay. I was thinking think about this as well. Like we don't really have like a a female sorcerer. Yeah. Like the women who can do magic, but no character who is defined as this is a sorcerer like Shang Tsung and Quan Chi. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. So you could have like a like a sexy sorceress well, lady from some other realm, and then she's going to come in and uh, like and she can be old, resurrects her. Shadow oh, sister Ser Ser Serena. Oh. Serena could do that actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was, that's thing. what I mean. The the shadowhood of sister sisterhood, right? That's what they're calling out. <laughs> the shadowhood of sisterhood. Wait, what, the shadow. What was it called? <laughs> What's it called? It's the Sisterhood of Shadow, because the Brotherhood uh, of the Shadow, but but without any men in it except for Quan Chi, who controls it. So now did he found it? Shadow. Does he just take over it? We don't know. Who knows? It's, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. The time the time period of MK1 is very weird too. It's like it feels like a lot of things are happening, but at the same time, it feels like a lot of time must have passed since Shang Tsung was recruited from Chronica. Uh, evil, sorry, Titan Shang Tsung and stuff. So it's like. When did this happen? Did, did it happen like within a couple of weeks, or did it happen like within a a lot of time passes? Who knows? <laughs> hey boys, I'm I'm taking my break now. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm gonna get a cheesecake. You're okay. You're okay. <laughs> Not like this. So you see, audience. I don't know how well you can see that, but I've rearrange my Scorpion and Sub-Zeros in the, the Funko so that Scorpion and Sub-Zeros are fighting each other. I actually have a few new ones since when I did the video on my MK collection. And so I have 2021 Scorpion and Sub-Zero fighting. Then you have MK1, actual MK1 Sub-Zero with a frozen Scorpion. That was a, a, a rare one to get, the frozen Scorpion from MKX. 
And then over there, you got Deadly Alliance Scorpion and MK1 Scorpion having set MKX Sub Zero on fire. And then you have MKX Scorpion Sub Zero in the background. Then you have the, the Kitana Molina here, the Raidens, the Liu Kangs, and Cole, because Cole has to go somewhere. I guess with Liu Kang makes sense. And there's this little Sonya. The only ones I'm missing are random variants of like movie Scorpion and Sub Zero, like Glowy Sub Zero and Kneeling Hanzo and whatnot. And uh, I'm also missing Goro, who's a bigger one from MKX. I don't know why they do these weird one off variants that just are hard to get a hold of. I think like a Comic Con exclusive or something. It's like people would love to buy a, a nice big Goro Funko Pop if they're into Funko Pops. And like, why not? Uh, although the next big thing that's, that they, that's coming out is uh, the, the new equivalent of Funko Pops, the new big dumb uh, pop culture thing is the tubs like a uh, little, little solid snake here. But now they're doing MK ones where you can get... <laughs> it's like, it's mostly predictable because there's four. There's four little ducks you can, you'll can you be able to get. Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Raiden. Oh yeah, oh, of course it's them. It, who's the fourth one? Katana, Liu Kang. <laughs> Goro actually, shockingly enough. But yeah, so it's like MK1, Scorpion, Sub-Zero. I think it's MK2, Raiden. And good old MK1, Goro as ducks. So that'd be the next big thing. I don't know where I'm going to put them. Uh, maybe with the Funkos. Who knows? I, I, I don't fucking know. But I, d I do know that Dog is back. And he, he's going to have his revenge. He didn't even hear that. Ha <laughs> ha. What a bitch. Look at this loser right here. Ha <laughs> ha. Welcome back, Dog. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I called you a bitch. Oh, did you? Nice. <laughs> I, I, I think I did. I might have done. I just like when you were spinning the lightsaber and I was like doing like... Flip, flip finger kung fu. Chat, chat, <laughs> chat. Let me know in the comments. Did I call him a bitch? I don't remember. It was, it was like a, less than a minute you ago. And I don't doing remember. doing these live. I was talking with the podcast girl at the uh, the Tekken event. And they do theirs live. I think we should too. Uh, so, so, there's something I think we get more it. money. <laughs> oh, donos, donos. Yeah, I love the idea of just being able to like interact with the. Ch but the problem is, if we started interacting with the chat, the episodes would be even longer. But, but then again, yeah. it wouldn't even be as big a deal because if, it, if it's all live, there's no editing. So it, yeah. it, so it, so it means longer episodes, but it also means that Sonic doesn't need to edit them anyway because it's live. So yep. there's, there's, there's ups and downs, mostly ups, I think. I think it's a win-win, personally. So should we do it? <laughs> I'm just joining a conversation. I have no idea what's going on. I, just, yeah, um, I'm assuming figured. you guys are talking about the live stream episodes. Yeah, it's, 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 we should yeah. like try. Because I was live talking with the podcast point. girl at the Tekken Eight event. Yeah, we could. Yeah. We should. We should definitely give that a shot. I think. I think it'd be kind of fun. Just see, like you know, how chat reacts and and whatnot. Um, yeah, and like I, you I, said, I, I, it could be easier for me. I was just saying be, the episodes would be a lot longer because we'd be interrupting constantly to, to respond to the chat. But then I thought, well, it's, it, it's not as oh, big. Oh, I a could deal do like... the new Twitch meta that everyone's talking about with oh, that you mean, like, one the... girl, like. Morgan hey Pie or whatever her name is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Miss the Miss Titties jiggle, but they're just barely out of no, frame. No, no. Thank you for yeah. a donation. <laughs> I hate to be that guy and do not leave this in. Do not leave this in. I think those because <laughs> they just look kind of weird. Aren't they off screen though? How do you can't really unless you have other footage. I can tell. I can tell. Okay. It's me we're talking about. Like, like Do not leave this in, Sonic. <laughs> okay, I will cut in, this out. I will cut this out. Okay. <laughs> you have to remember, Sonic, Dog had two figures of Ivy from Soul Calibur. And remember, one of Matt Pat's <laughs> earliest videos was, was describing whether or not Ivy's boobs are real. And he f concluded they are fake because the nipples point in the wrong direction and the, t and the two round. Two. That's insane. I can't believe... Wow, Listen, early Matt Pat, That's dude. actually just because Japan doesn't know. Japan hasn't known for a while what big natural boobies look like, for, or they just prefer the, they find it more aesthetically pleasing with the fake ones, one of the two. Because in every anime, the women have the butt crack cleavage, right? Where it goes like this, you know what I mean? Looks like two yeah. circles. Mm -hmm. That's not what natural boobs do. Natural boobs are a straight line. I, it's just mm. not as appealing to them, I guess, but natural boobs are a straight line. Yeah, the, the thing cleavage. is, it depends on like, it's, it's not about what looks um, what looks geometrically or like what's correct it's what makes you feel it's good it's what they like more yeah, yeah. that's how that's how so that the pointing outwards more. could just be because they just like that more like the yeah. visually appealing um also there's been a running joke that japan so the actual thing is if they draw nipples it would be not allowed yeah so they just don't draw the nipple mm -hmm. so if yeah. the girl's got hair barely covering her tits in the wrong spot 
she still doesn't have nipples for some reason. So the joke is Japan doesn't know where nipples are. But of course they do. They just don't want to draw them because then they'd be like censored. Exactly. But yeah. I, I like that joke too. Maybe maybe like the Ivy modeler just doesn't know where nipples are. So he just <laughs> assumes they wouldn't be showing. <laughs> Uh, what was I talking? Yeah, something something to mention. Leave by that the way. out. If uh, the whole thing, or like, I, I think the Ivy part. Leave that out. All right, all right, I'll keep that out. So you can we, leave the Ivy part in. That we are funny. quite into the episode already, and I have a feeling if we talk about the uh, Quan Chi and Game Awards stuff, we will be basically two episodes of a mount. So just, do you think we should probably split this episode in two, or? Should we cut our to- cut the topic a little bit shorter? Like, not talk too much well, about this stuff. Is there much to say about the game awards, really? Well, I'm, I think there's more we can talk about for Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat, especially with what Trotter Dog recently said. I think that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, if you that's... include my controversy, it's kind of funny. I feel like that's a, that's a small amount, really. Oh, we'll see, okay, though. I, I, I mean, could... I felt. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I have my like, own my, my own little uh, feud on Twitter recently. That that could be a fun topic. <laughs> okay, because I feel like the Tekken and even our what's been going on with us. I thought that was going to take up less than an hour, and we're two hours and twenty minutes in. So, and I'll just I'll just I'm just throwing yeah. it out there. But let's uh, let's just kind of get into my, it. My vote, my vote is to possibly possibly make it two videos, just because both of the titles would be very clickable. What would the first like one ones be, about like the MK versus Street Fighter drama, and then the other ones about like um, you could maybe take the Quan Chi part and oh, put it in the it. first video instead, uh, and then that could be the Quan Chi video. But we'll see. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good point. Quan yeah. Chi trailer sucks, and then you have <laughs> it does not Street Fighter suck. versus MK One sucks or Game Awards sucks because it does kind of suck. I didn't even watch it. Did y'all even watch it? I didn't watch Game Awards. Good for you, but at the same time, I, I skimmed it. I watched the but, I watched the entire. Yeah, I skimmed through it. Um, but let's get to the Quan Chi part first. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you guys think about the Mortal Kombat 1 Quan Chi trailer? Well, we talk about the Game Awards in the next episode. 